Hello and welcome back to the finals of the Quiff 2024, the 17th edition. Uh, I'm John Partridge, joined today by Shauna Coxey. Um, five times winner here at the Quiff, so <laughs> she's going to be providing my expert insight. Um, we had the semi-finals a few minutes, well, a few hours ago now. Uh, Shauna, uh, give us an update. What happened? The semi-finals was a brutal round. The athletes had four boulders, and they were hard. They made mm. them work really, really hard to get through to this round. So I just can't see what they've got left because they're going to need to have something to get up these ones. That's for sure. Yeah. The finals look wild. Yeah, it looks like the root setters have really excelled themselves there is pretty much something for everybody here a couple of new moves we might not have seen before yeah I think you know this round looks like it could put on one of the best shows in comp climbing that I've so. ever seen so I really hope it goes that way and I'm sure the athletes are gonna be wanting to display their very best selves and you know that's what the root setters want to give them so yeah I really think they've done that yeah and uh, as always we've got some amazing athletes big names for you guys mm -hmm. a lot of yep. them that you'll be aware of from uh, Instagram, you know, you know we've got Olympians, celebrity. we've got yeah. previous world, we've got World Cup winners, we've got previous Quiff winners. This is an intense and difficult round of a competition, and it's yeah, it's anyone's to take home tonight. Absolutely, and I, for one, this time don't want to put my money on anybody. I can't <laughs> I call it. Can, I can't call, call it. it. No, can't call it. Not yet. Uh, but anyway, uh, here's a few messages from our sponsors. We're going to head up to the booth, and I hope you enjoy the finals. See you soon. This is the greenest city in England, packed full of culture and heritage too. With a restless sense of adventure, but still a down-to-earth friendliness. <laughs> we are a city made by inventive people, doing things to push boundaries, impact the world. If you're thinking big, there's room to grow. With a little exploration, you'll always find more than you expected. And in the outdoor city, there's always space for the important things in life. Hi, Colin. The world out there is a wonderful world. about them. <laughs> so whether you're looking for a weekend breath of fresh air or looking to put down roots, come and make yourself at home in Sheffield.
and just like that, it's magic. We're here in our booth. We're no longer on your screens, but we are here, excited, ready for the final of the quiff. Shauna, we're going to see some climbing. What's your prediction in terms of the spectacle John, we're about to see? Not, not, not the no result. Prediction. Not the result. But My like, prediction of the spectacle is that yeah. it's going to be incredible. These boulders are wild. There's something that we've maybe never seen before in an international competition. Yeah. There's boulders that look spicy. There's some that look rather simple, but I don't think it's going to be the case. Um, from speaking to the root setters, there's just absolutely everything on the yeah. wall. The athletes. They're going to get to display their best selves out there, I really hope. Yeah, I just hope they've all got enough left in the tank. But um, I'm sure they will, because look at this start list here. These are the men's finalists. So these guys are the top six guys qualifying from over 150 people yesterday. We've got Jack McDougall, Yannick Floey, uh, Aidan Dunn, Alex Magos, Daiko Sino and Maximilian Milne. Um, and I have to say, Max was looking on fire earlier, right? Wasn't he? Just both Max and Jenya, I feel like we're in a league of their own when they were just kind of, both their attitude, their physical state, it just looked different for them. Yeah, I mean, we're just over here now. Uh, Percy over on the microphone. He's our in-venue commentator, co-owner, chief route setter for uh, the first Olympic Games. So he knows a thing or two. Um, pleased to have him on the mic inside the venue. But uh, yeah, on screen now, we're going to give you a bit of a rundown on the uh, uh, women's competition. So Faye McDougall uh, qualifying, uh, Emma Rachel Edwards, Lucy Garlic, Molly Thompson-Smith, Holly Tootil, and uh, Ginger Kazbakova absolutely smashing it. A bit like Max in the men's competition. Uh, they both uh, just the top athletes. They were the only people to do four boulders in their category. So they were pretty far out ahead of the rest. We sort of had um, mm -hmm. three boulders for the others underneath there. So, yeah, a pretty good show by the women as well. Yeah, I, do you know, I really enjoyed the semi-finals yeah, round. I mean, and we spoke about it earlier that the cutoff to get into finals was a whole boulder. You know, in, in the women's, you had to do more boulders in for sixth and seventh, mm. and the same for the men's. And I, I really like when there's that distinction. Um, I think we saw athletes kind of fighting and squirming and working hard on the wall, and I yeah. think that that's going to be the case again. But you've got to consider, these athletes, they did 30 boulders in a qualification round yesterday. They've done semi-finals this yeah. morning. They've gone away, had a break between, but you know, it's a really intense two days of competing this it's, event. I think uh, you and I are probably going to talk a lot about conditions, maybe in this, mm -hmm. in this and, final. And skin, and, skin. and hips, because yeah. I always talk about hips yeah. for anyone who's heard me commentate Absolutely. previously. Uh, well, I think they're going to need it because as you, as you would expect in an international standard uh, final, um, there is a lot for these guys to get stuck into. I think we're going to see quite a few attempts on the boulders. Just looking at them, they seem... I, I Personally, I don't feel like there's going to be many flashes on a lot of them. I think it's going to be, it's they're going to have to work for so it. It's just so hard to know. And, you know, you speak to the root setters and you ask how many tops, how many flashes, what do you expect? And they say, no matter what we say, it'll end up mm. being different. So yeah. we almost don't want to. Um, but I really think that these blocks are going to test the athletes and make or force them to be creative and yeah. specific to their own styles. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, um, let's take a look at some of the results uh, from earlier on today. As we were saying, Max Milne out in first place. His first international comp of the season. So he's really using this as sort of a benchmark. He's one of the guys looking to make the Olympics. So he's going to be going to the qualifiers. Um, we've got uh, Daiki Sono in uh, second place. It's three tops in five. Alex Magos, three and eight. Aidan Dunn, three and four. Yannick and Jack McDougall. So pretty, uh, you know, as we can see in the results there, pretty impressive. Yeah, I'd have Jim in that seventh spot, just yeah. missing out unfortunately. But as you can see, Jack, he had the three tops, Jim with just two, so that's the distinction I mentioned earlier, just yeah. that really clear cut line. I think all of the athletes that are in finals, we saw them having to battle and fight, maybe other than Max, you know, with only that one fall, looking in a league of his own, but that kind of means there's anything to play for still yeah. in this round. Of course, countback might become a factor, yeah. rarely is. So, yeah, will we see Max kind of in that flow state that he really seemed to hit in semi-finals again? It's a, it's a pleasure to watch when, you, oh. when, when he does yeah, kind absolutely. of perform like that. Yeah, and... and 
as you say, getting into that flow state is really hard in these hard pressure environments, right? And in a minute, we're going to see the athletes come in for presentation. You know, it's already ratcheting up, right? They're, they're in isolation, they're stressed. They're going to come out, see the crowd stress. You know, we are at the beginning of the season. So for these athletes, some of them, it's the first comp of the year. Jenya sitting in first place in the women's here right yeah. now, competing in the Ukrainian Championships just last weekend, wow. winning Boulder and Leeds. So, you know, walking is into this event kind of maybe not got those first of first comp nerves out of the way and yeah. holly as well she won plywood masters just last course, weekend yeah. so yeah these these two have maybe got that little nervous little wobbles out of the way but i For think sure. it's definitely this this event carries a lot of prestige and it's when it's on your home turf as well i think that that kind of yeah. adds a lot of layers you know holly um sorry molly lives in sheffield so i expect yeah. a lot of friends in the crowd here today too and then we got lucy emma rachel and faye of course we haven't even talked about the siblings uh, making uh, finals that's so cool it, it uh, isn't got, it just uh, jack and faye one in one one in each uh, category jack, 18 years old and on the podium last year and faye mcdougall only 16. incredible and she was 16 last month wild yeah wild. really impressive and, and their sister was in semi-finals too we can't not mention that what a family but but they're going to compete to, i think they're both in sixth place if i'm if i'm re yeah they're, they're coming out together to oh, compete in the final a, a how amazing and we have the kasbakova sisters in right. semi-finals too what, so yeah so what we're looking for for the siblings you can see rafi just in 10th place there we're going to go through all the climbs in a minute we've got some amazing 3d models to hopefully give you a bit more uh idea of what the guys are going to be doing but can you imagine uh Jack and Faye on their final boulders, topping out together. You know, I've just like, been chatting to that mum, and she said, "I don't know, I don't know where I'm going to look." And I was like, "Wow, well, it's so cool you get to watch them both." But yeah. I didn't realise that it was at the same. Yeah, time. yeah, it's mad. <laughs> um, so I wonder if that's ever happened before in an international competition. Whether I feel like it maybe has, um, but I, yeah, I'm not sure. I definitely don't think it has yeah. that quiff anyway. We need to get the oracle <laughs> of uh, the IFSC, uh, Tim Hatch, on the case to let us know. Uh, yeah, that, that's worth another point worth saying is, you know, uh, this event is supported by a huge quantity of people. So we've got uh, chief IFSC judges here. Uh, we've got international route setters. Garrett Greger, we haven't, re we, we obviously mentioned him in passing, but, you know, he's, he's, a pretty big deal at the moment in the in the terms of route setting world, right? Yeah, definitely. He's over from the states and he's chiefing this event. Um, Garrett's an old friend of mine and one of the loveliest people I know. But he definitely knows how to test the athletes on his boulders. And there's yeah. a really strong crew of route setters. Actually, they're so passionate. They work tirelessly to make these boulders perfect so the athletes can display their best selves on the wall. You know, that's what we all want to see. Yeah. We want to see the athletes out there fighting hard and working. And actually, we could just see a couple of them on your screen there they're all got the best seats in the house quite rightly after a couple of hard days work they deserve <laughs> to be front and center although I'm sure they'll be biting their nails um, I don't think uh, they'll be uh, knowing what what the results are going to be on this round for yeah, sure. Yeah Garrett Gregor in white in the middle of your screen there just yeah. there. Yeah it's, it's really impressive and obviously you and I not only have we got the best seats in the house to watch the comp but we've got to go onto the mats we've got to fondle some holds you know uh, it's some really interesting creative route setting and a variety of holds that like you only really get to experience in an international competition where you get like that quantity of amazing grips right yeah and also a lot of these holds that we see on screen these athletes won't have seen before because they're new holds they might be a new brand coming in we've yeah. seen that here or they might be just new kind of holds that are coming into other brands and I think that that's a really cool opportunity for these athletes especially going into the season because these yeah. holds will be at the World Cups. Yeah and it's uh, it's almost a bit of a leveler when there are certain holds that certain people maybe haven't used or, or the whole crew haven't used uh -huh. before yeah. and it's a real uh, opportunity for them to truly test themselves on you know unique route setting uh, with um, unique grips. So um, yeah uh, we're just going to say hi to you guys from our booth we're up here there's Shauna. Hi, Mum. Uh, we're on TV. Uh, so, yeah, we've got the best seat in the house on top of the disabled toilets. Uh, that's the, the dizzy heights of the commentary life that we lead. Um, but, yeah, uh, if you pan over to your left, you can see uh, the crowd all in uh, all in situ. We're really excited. Uh, feel blessed always to be part of these events. And uh, having Shauna here, uh, who has won so many of these, is a real privilege for me. Um, so, yeah, I'm excited. I really am. It is such a pleasure to be here. I really love 
watching climbing and talking about it and yeah having competed on the international circuit for over a decade yeah. myself um, I've got a fair bit of experience of what it feels like to be out on these mats so well, yeah I'm gonna be picking your brain as much as I can <laughs> on what they're gonna be feeling but um, it's it's unlike an experience I mean I, I, I did a bunch of competitions uh, but I never reached the level that you left uh, uh, reached you know to come out qualifying first for a final like you did so many times at mm -hmm. this event it's next level pressure I mean how, how are these guys going to be feeling like uh, Max uh, Ginger yeah, you know these guys yeah, and yeah. you know the history how, how what do you think I think there's so many layers so like you know this this being one of the first events of the season it's almost a chance to test out whether or not your off-season training has worked yeah. to see where you're at maybe make some tweaks ahead of the season you know both Jenya and Max who are quali qualified in first place they're both qualified for the Olympic qualifier series that's mm. coming up later in the year that's what they're focuses that's they've been very vocal about that very passionate about qualifying for the Olympics neither of them Olympians yet so there is the pressure of this event but there's also the looming season ahead and you yeah. know it is one of the biggest seasons of their lives yeah. because of that Olympic place on the spot so um, yeah I I expect there's just a lot going on for them, but I almost feel like this is going to be a learning event more than anything else. Yeah, you talked about that earlier, like uh, whether it was learning on the fly or learning from your mistakes, but that's such an important part of climbing that I think if you're new to the sport, maybe you uh, aren't familiar with like the, the nuances of climbing. And one thing that makes finals different from the other rounds is they're going to be able to view these climbs in advance. And in a second, we're going to be bringing them all out. And that's a big part of the finals round. Um, in your opinion, do you think do you think the viewing makes it easier or harder? So what will happen shortly is the athletes will get two minutes per boulder problem and it's called observation. So they get to discuss together if they choose. They're allowed to talk. They get to look at all of the movements. They can touch the start holes, but they can't touch anything else. Um, and it is just a little bit different, I guess, to have that moment. It's not something that we see in other rounds. Yeah. And it's quite unusual, I think, for other competitions too. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's truly unique. Um, but yeah, we're going to hand over now. Uh, Percy Bishton, our in-house commentator, is going to be introducing the finalists. Then we have the Swift regular, also from Germany, Alexander Megos. <laughs> then we have the qualification round, Daiki Sano from Japan. Finally, the winner of the semi-final round from Great Britain, Max Mill. And now, uh, the women's competition. First out from Great Britain, we have Faye McDougall. And also from Great Britain, Emma Edwards. Then Lucy Garlic from Great Britain. Also from GB, Molly Thompson-Smith. <laughs> then our final GB athlete tonight, Holly Tootill. <laughs> and the winner of the semi-final round from Ukraine, Yenya Kazmakova. <laughs> Those are your quick finalists. I think now they're ready for the observation. Okay, off we go. So they have two minutes per bowler. Okay, so uh, that's the presentation of the finalists. Uh, I'm really privileged to have uh, the big dog in the house. Uh, Garrett Greger has come up, uh, chief route setter for this event. He's come up, uh, he's going to help uh, sort of talk through some of the climbs because we're in an observation period now. So the athletes are going to work together to um, try and solve these problems. Uh, we've got some amazing graphics uh, which we're going to bring you in a second. Uh, what we're looking at here yeah, this is the male first problem. Is that right, Garrett? That's right. That's what we're looking at here. And thanks for having me, John. I appreciate it. Of course. Um, yeah, so what we're looking at, we can see the online observation here right now. Uh, the idea behind this is that there's um, there's not a lot of ways through it except to go through the crack. So, Amazing. Uh, the climbers are going to be confronted with 
kind of these almost pretty nasty positions. Uh, they're going to have to finagle their way into this little crimp here you can see on the left. A lot yeah. of great detail. Uh, and and then this is the crack. This is the crack, exactly. Um, we called it the rocker blocker because <laughs> you kind of have to get into like a little uh, finger, lock? Yeah, finger lock here. You flip it and then you go up to this block hold. Oof. What you can't see here is there's another block hold here. Uh, so just below the hold that you see above that area, you can actually, you, you actually don't have that slot anymore. Really. Oh, wow. And then you have to do a big, big move up and right to this last hold. So, uh, pretty complex start to finish, uh, quite a fiddly climb, you've got a lot of moves to do without going very far, is that a fair assessment? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think that's a really fair assessment. <laughs> cool. and so you're aiming on this first ball to just to tire them out, like get, get, a, get a lot of attempts in, try and already create a bit of a slip? You know, I don't know if we're so conscious of like tiring them out on this one versus that one, especially when we're setting it. But as we start to select throughout the round, this one might make a better first boulder. This one might give them a little bit of breather before they go into the last boulder. Yeah. Uh, we're a little bit more conscious when it comes to that. For here, it was kind of like, let's let's get that nasty bit out of the way to begin with. <laughs> yeah. Give them a fighting chance. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, uh, in a second we're going to get uh, F1 uh, on your screen. So uh, this one... I mean, it's a place I like to call Tita Town, I think, like, <laughs> right? Uh, talk us through this one, Garrett. Yeah, T another great nickname for, <laughs> for this one. Uh, it's pretty minimal. You can see here there's not a lot of things. When they start to zoom out, you can see the, the bad angle of this hold. That's going to be really the main crux of this. That angle continues all the way up. And then you can see they look a lot bigger here on the screen, but you can see kind of reference size next to the T-nuts there. They're really not that big, oh, nor tiny. are they very high profile. So um, uh, you need some stiff shoes for these guys? The stiff shoes, and at the same time, you want some soft shoes to for stand on the back of that volume. So, in fact, a lot of foot strength required to stand up on these things, too. It's not just the, the stiffness of your shoe. Awesome. Um, so uh, this one was set by Kalian. So uh, it's quite a big team you guys have had on this event? Yeah, we've had four of us here over on the, and myself included, over on the semis and finals side. And then we've had a whole separate team of competitors that, or excuse me, of uh, route setters that helped with the qualifying round. Well, you guys smashed it on the uh, the semi-final round, so Thank I'm, you. I'm pretty sure you will again. Well, I'm this one here, uh, we're on M2, right? And we've just been chatting. We don't think this problem, this movement, has ever been seen in a competition before. Is this is this correct? Uh, I don't quote me on this, but I don't think it's been seen okay. and remains to be seen. We'll yeah. see what the competitors do. And I think that brings up a good point too, which is like, it's not just about what we do. Yeah. It's about what the competitors how really they show. Yeah, yeah. And how they, how they show their skill set. So that's, that's really who we want to see succeed. On so um, we're not going to spoil it for you guys at home, but there, you know, maybe is there, there's a unusual sequence to that climb. Yeah. Um, so we're just going to fast forward that one. And now we're going to show you F2. So, um, F2 through the steepest section of the wall, right? Uh, burly, slopey, what's going on? Yeah, there's uh, maybe a couple of different ways to get through the start here where they could jump and use their momentum to catch a toe hook. They might jump and grab both of them. Uh, and then it's it's not really that cryptic, nor is it that tricky. Uh, you can see this hold's blocked here. Uh, it's again making it look generous, and that last hold looking a little bit more generous than it is. Yeah. But you really have to fire up into that last hold in order to Go get give enough. It some, yeah. yeah. Get up on the bicep and arm. Yeah. yeah. And of course the steepest section. So uh, now we're on to M3. The guys are, yeah, reading this one in a world of pain, I guess. Um, yeah, yeah, they're they're going to be kind of tucked back into this corner. And the real exciting part of this one is how they manage their mobility. Yeah. So as you come out of that corner, you're really set up to face out and jump, which is totally possible. But the easier method actually is to release your body and turn back around so that you can jump with your right hand and, and be facing it. And so you end up on that like slotted jug and then it's a case of picking your way through those blocks. Yeah, uh, as you saw the holes rim. there, yeah. they're really, really bad and thin. And in fact, they got they got moved a little bit even. And is the sequence obvious for that when you're there? Or is it are you going to take a few attempts potentially to find the right uh, sequence through there? Yeah, I, I forget what I was calling it. The, the cryptic crimp accordion, I think is, is how we like to <laughs> refer to nice. it. Um, but 
Yeah, they're they're real small there, and it's not super obvious. You could go left hand off the big jug, or you could go right hand. Yeah. But either way, you're kind of having to like pick and choose, and none of them are good enough to really sit there and think. And, and again, a bit like that uh, first climb, you're doing a lot of moves without going very far yeah, through that's the right. secrets, just that's through, right. picking your way through. Yeah, uh, one of the things Shauna mentioned earlier was that they seemed a little bit smaller, but they pack a lot into yeah, a small space. For sure. Um, so we're on to the uh, next female climb, which is on your screen. These are the Vezi grips. So um, uh, we'll get the graphic in a second, but essentially, uh, you know, uh, Obvious start position, bust a move to a slope, and, and and keep keep going. Yeah, similar thing here. Not not a lot of like trickery involved with this, uh, but a lot of leg strength, a lot of uh, contact strength as you paddle through this, and and a lot of what's important there is that their body trajectory is right as they go to these holds. So if they're coming out too early, if they yeah. don't have enough height, then they're not going to be able to power through those things. And looks like a difficult finish as well to a very un unfriendly hold. Yeah, you can see there. It's just no in cut really to it. It is on the top of a volume there, um, but it's blind a little bit going around that corner, and so you really have to get some again. That's kind of the name of the game is to make sure <laughs> For we sure. force them into positions or, or encourage them into positions where they're forced to make decisions. Yeah, I'm uh, excited to see that climb. Uh, so now we're going to finish up the round here. This is M4 we're looking at. So again, this one, uh, you know, they've done a lot to get to this point and you guys are really finishing with, you know, something something really hard on the skin. Yeah, at this, at this point, you know, they've done a whole qualifier round. Some of them have done 30 boulders. Uh, yeah. Daiki, I think, in, in the case of Daiki, he, he had 30 boulders, but no falls. Yeah. Uh, so maybe he'll have a little bit easier time. But yeah, it does ask a lot of the skin. And as you go through the, the competition, there's there's a lot to be asked. So this is uh, just a, a sort of uh, one-two into a good hole? Yeah, I would have said 10 years ago, this would have been very cryptic and uh, hard to read. But they'll know exactly what they're doing. You can yeah. see them reading it there. They might even try to sneak a little toe hook or a foot cam in there, which could be possible if you're strong enough you know we, we try to make sure that there's a, maybe a number of different ways on occasion but that they're all yeah. of a similar level too and we saw you guys uh, just before uh, we finished there was a you, you were trying to like ensure there was a, a whole block suitably on this one so yeah let's hope uh, that that works out and uh, F4 here so the uh, women's final uh, bowler uh, what have they got in store uh, F4 here is going to be hopefully the people pleaser will give them the opportunity to really show off their strength, uh, what they've got left in the tank because it's it's not the most physically demanding boulder, but whether or not they have the stamina to go through this and yeah. and make those decisions confidently is what we'll find out. Um, wow. You can see here as they go through this section, they'll grab this small right hand. Uh, they're having to like push super hard on the back of the volume. Uh, and then get higher up into this underclaim, that purple hold there. They'll have to get higher up into that in order to get up onto this volume. Uh, and then they'll, they'll be put into a position where they grab the top of this volume here that you can see. Decent hold, but you're kind of tucked up into this small ball and you have to like really explode out of it. Potential heartbreak hotel there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or again, if you have the mobility, maybe they show their strength and their awesome. ability to muscle through it. Well, Garrett, thank you so much for taking the time to come and talk to us through all of those climbs. Uh, from from what I've seen here, you guys have absolutely smashed it. Obviously, I know the, mo the pressure is kind of on now, but the blocks are on the wall, so you guys can sit back and hopefully enjoy a little. Yeah, so long as holds don't come off the wall, our job is done. <laughs> yeah. Now it's up to the athletes to, to determine sure. what, what happens. It's their time to shine. Well, yeah. thanks so much for coming up to see us, and uh, yeah, let's see what the athletes have got. All right. Thanks for having me. Cheers. So, that was the man the, in charge of the route setting, Garrett Greger. Um, fair to say, one of the best in the business right now. So uh, we're super lucky to have him here at this event. And um, in addition to the, the in-house team we have here as well, um, shout out to Max Cousins, um, uh, Kaylian Harker, um, who else we had? Andy Long, um, Max. Yeah, some you know some of our best UK talent, and uh, we're really lucky. And I know they're all really excited to see um, the competitors get stuck into the problems. 
Shauna. I'm back. You're back. Garrett's not replaced me, although I think Never. he could, you know? He was I don't know. chatting away there. And I got I, lost I in his eyes. sad that I couldn't hear. It's so loud in here, so I couldn't get to listen. I nearly tuned well, into the live stream. I'm just going to have the same questions for you. Like, um, I mean, from what you've seen, um, having a quick feel on the mats, uh, where's your eye being drawn to? What's the What are the climbs you, you, you think are going to stand out? I don't want to give any spoilers away. M2 is for sure going to be one to watch. Yeah. And... I'm really intrigued also by M1. It looks pretty gnarly and not very pleasant. Yeah. Um, which. When he t- when he t- he you said know, I was speaking to Matt Cousins, he said this boulder, and he said, you've got to do a rock on yeah. to, like, literally a rock on time to get in it, up to the zone, flip it. And I was like, you have to flip. It, it looks like putting your hand in a dog's mouth, honestly. Oh, man. Yeah, I can't wait to see. And uh, we're we don't have, have to. Yeah, because here we've got our first finalists out uh, brother and sister, Faye and Jack McPhee. Google. Uh, let's see what they got. And their mum is stood smack bang in the middle of yeah. both of them That's filming. She just looks between them and I think she knows yeah. who to film. That's one proud mama bear right there, I think. Yeah. Awesome effort from both of these guys qualifying. Not only did they qualify for the final, but they managed to do it perfectly so they could climb together. Interestingly, they've come out and brushed the hold straight away. Yeah. Really mature, like, or yeah. approach from both of them is so immature climbing, but just their tactics I think they, they could almost sense that we've felt those holes just before them so they probably wanted to get them in good shape but here we go no yeah. messing around they've had their observation so they're in yeah and jack's on the wall and i'm sure fail join him in a second he's yeah. in that kind of ring finger lock nastiness and he's about to try and flip it he's got the zone he secured that on his first attempt really yeah. great effort and he's gonna i think attempt to go straight up without flipping it he's kind of having a think you can see him trying to work it out it on the wall attempts to flip it doesn't quite manage and now we're seeing Faye work her way up these holds are tiny I asked the setters what was going on here what is this all about and apparently they were asked to set something minimal and that is what they've done well they've achieved it haven't they and uh, we're just chatting with Gregor and uh, um, the Garrett sorry and saying uh, you almost need like two sets of shoes on the border problem. You need soft shoes to start mm-hmm. on the volume and then you need something stiffer for standing on these pedals. Yeah, as soon as I saw them I turned to you yeah. and said they're going to need stiff shoes. Yeah. But you know on that start you want a softer shoe and that's going to play into tactics as well. For what sure. shoe they choose. Actually, how many shoes do they have in their bag? Do they take multiple out? Are they yeah. the type of athlete that enjoys figuring out what they want to wear for each boulder or do they just have ones that have comp shoes? I guess we'll see as the round progresses if anyone chooses to change shoes yeah. they are totally allowed to do that well uh, uh, just to fill you in on where we're up to Jack um, this is his second attempt and on the first try he was straight up to the zone hold so hopefully he can figure out um, how, oh, cutting loose on that finger what lock safe. amazing uh, Faye also um, making good progress getting stood up on the volume again um, so Jack. just slipping off again Jack's but got the right idea there he attempted the flip again so it looks like he knows what to do he just needs to execute there is time on the clock so he has time to try again um, I worry if that little slip there cost him some energy and zapped him a little bit but he seemed to recompose himself really well yeah and, and his strategy as we keep talking about across all the rounds is really important especially when you've got another three climbs to do so something physical like this you know you've got to got to pace yourself right I think so but you've got to be mindful of the time ticking down you don't want to pull on too late so once that time is up they cannot get back on yep. so if you were to pull on the wall with 30 seconds to go and it could slip again and you know you wouldn't be able to retry yep. maybe um, so yeah there's a lot of learning involved and a lot of tactics like we keep saying well here he goes he's up high again and Faye also making good progress on the slab um, here we go he's turned he hasn't quite managed to turn it he's going for it anyway he reaches up and just just misses it and Faye's just struggling to get established she can get sorry struggling to get established on the tiny little foothold she's getting really well established on the black volume start and looking really controlled there but then kind of seeming to falter as she gets to the teeny tiny little footholds that you can barely see on screen yeah I think um, on her first try was definitely her best go um, maybe she was more relaxed and confident pushing through the feet but um, 
Yeah, she's she's managing to get stood up, but then just and not managing to transition across. Faye, only 16 years old. Jack, yeah. 18 years old. Brother and sister out here. Their, their sister was also in semi-finals. What, what an achievement. I know maybe that wasn't the round, the rotation they would want to have coming out, but regardless, really, really impressive from them. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Jack securing zone. Uh, Faye, unfortunately, just falling a little bit short on her first attempt. But still, you know, they can take a bit of confidence. It's early in this round. Uh, we still don't know how any of the other people are going to get on. So, um, yeah, let's see what happens. We've got Aidan Dunn out uh, in the men's competition. Uh, and then Emma Rachel is starting her round. Uh, again, same tactics from all of them. Out. Brush. Back on the wall. Pretty standard rotation. Aidan just firing off on his first go. Um, some really awkward... Um, start position. Jack seemed to make short work of it, but um, Aiden just struggling to get established in the finger lock. But um, Emma Rachel cruising through this lap. Yeah, both of these athletes were in the Plywood Master Final, another UK event just uh, last weekend. Aiden uh, taking wow. first place, I believe, and yeah, Emma in the final too, but just wobbling off the slab there. But Aiden is up now. He's heading for that zone. He secures the zone. That was impressive strength. Really good connection through his foot there. Yeah. Can he make this flip? work he wants to turn his right hand from facing up towards facing an undercut he yes. almost sticks it so there's so many different holds in this crack that you can see there on the top left corner of the screen and they're there just to force the climbers to be accurate and precise in doing that flip it doesn't look like a pleasant boulder i'm going to put that out there it looks <laughs> yeah. unpleasant actually i asked matt what well, how would you describe this and he said unpleasant yeah, yeah. It's, uh, i think matt's charging by the screw by the looks of it because there are hundreds <laughs> of holes in that uh, well, not hundreds, but there's several. I'd be holes. curious to know how many there are. There yeah. are so many in yeah. there. You are right. He's not messing around. Um, but yeah, pretty, uh, pretty basic in, ter in terms of uh, the sequence these guys need to and girls need to use. Um, do you, you know, is that the kind of problem you want to come out to first? Something that you kind of, you know, exactly kind of what you need to do, but you just need to execute it, or do you prefer something where you have to experiment? Oh, I think that's a really tricky question. I always actually really enjoyed coming out when no one had done the boulder because it was like, oh, this is almost a free pass if you can do it, and if you don't, you're kind of on the same level playing field. Yeah. So all the athletes are sat on the edge of the mat now, so they can't turn and watch their fellow competitors, but they'll be getting a feel. They can see the crowd, they can hear what's going on, and also yeah. when the athletes come and sit back into that little isolation zone, if they're smiling or frowning, it's quite a big tell. Emma on the slab secures that Amazing. zone, first athlete to do so in the women's, and then that little step through. Petering her feet. These holds are not great. So this is a fantastic effort from her. Needs to keep her cool. Transitioning across this final section. The last hold again is a very, very small pebble yes. hold. She's in. And that's our great. first top of the final. A really, really great effort from Emma, Rachel Edwards there. I asked Kaylian, where are they going to fall off this? And he said, everywhere. Every single move yeah. is droppable. So for her to keep her composure after hitting that zone, you know, she didn't sure. look totally secure but she seemed to calm herself down do that cross through and really make it work and I asked how hard is it how many tops do you want and he said it might be too hard but not for Emma yeah she, she kept her composure especially on that last move where you know the, the position was so insecure and still moving the feet with these marginal hands really impressive not to sort of shake herself off the uh, off the boulder problem Meanwhile, uh, we have Aiden just trying to figure out, similarly to Jack, um, how to approach this climb. They've, they've both got to the zone very um, uh, confidently, and it's just proving a bit more difficult to flip the ring lock. Uh, with there's so many blocker holds involved in there, I wonder if they just maybe added one too many or something. Aiden as well. He keeps looking down at his skin. He's really kind of seemingly concerned about the the sweat on his on his fingertips. Um, he did a little slip then, and also, you know, the zone hold, so they're going up to this, this finger lock in the crack and then they're hitting the zone hold, and that, thing, that zone hold is terrible, and this first move, it's it's unforgiving, you know, the foothold is yeah. really terrible, and yeah. Aiden's walking away with the zone, but with no top there. 
Yeah, uh, you're getting a serious amount of power out of starting on two biceps with a really bad hold. So that's going to sap them a little bit. You know, that's a four minute boulder that they're on there. A, lot, a reasonable amount of attempts. So that's going to, you know, cumulatively add up through this round. Yeah, interestingly, the women's, it won't be zapping them because obviously yeah. it's, it's more delicate. And with Emma finishing early and getting more rest and kind of not yeah. having those attempts. But on the men's, a lot of attempts will cost you on a boulder like this because it is so physical. And I think also with skin, if you're slipping off those first holds, Lucy Garlic wasting no time and really kind of getting involved on this. She gets on the wall before Yannick and he joins her now yeah. straight into that finger lock for Yannick. I think he's got his this is only style. his index, one finger index in there. There's not, a man who climbs in the Frankenjur. Not a two finger lock <laughs> at all, just a one finger index. Can he make the flip work? It looks like he has. He's stuck it. I think that's a really good strategy from him, using one finger, because it made it easier to switch. The moment though, John, he's setting up for that last hole. Can he stick it on his flash go? That is so impressive. Little one one armor to finish too. Yeah, that was super smart from him, where uh, using one finger. He managed to flip it so much more easily than I the other two. I think we didn't see Yannick's best self in semi-finals. Yeah. He is qualified for the Olympic qualifier series. He's a World Cup winner. Interestingly, yeah. he. So Max Mill, who we'll see later, he won a silver medal at the Brixton World Cup in 2022, and Yannick won that comp, so it's kind of like a little rematch, it feels like, here today. That's beef, is that what you're saying? <laughs> and, Mac, and Yannick's <laughs> going to go and sit in there. No beef at all, I'm sure. Just uh, No beef, yeah. I'm just going to win. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit of friendly competition, you yeah. know, as it always is, but yeah, a really experienced athlete. Whereas Lucy Garlic, we see here, just 17 years old, she's um, done some of the European comps, and she's at believed in a couple or one or two World Cups but she's on the World Cup team for this year and she's made every single Youth World Champs final. Incredible. So every World Youth World Champs she's entered, she's made the final so yeah, she is for sure one to watch. Just a little foot slip there, unfortunate for Lucy but she's really, really making massive gains in her climbing. Yeah, she's really transi transitioning, as you say, into like a very experienced senior competitor now and um, obviously coming through those ranks, that can be quite a, t a period where you can struggle as an athlete, maybe getting established into that circuit. So it's, it's, it's really impressive, not just the results she's had, but uh, the results that sh she's having. Yeah, great that she's gaining that experience and really stepping up. And I think you're seeing the confidence even as she's walking around on the mats, reading the boulders. Yeah. She seems like she's really stepped up. So great to see her in this round for sure. Absolutely. And, you know, she's. She's putting in a good shift on this boulder. It, uh, she knows what to do. She's just trying to execute it now. So being very, very slow, precise. You can see her hips. She threw her hips to the right there to weight the right foot more yeah. because of that foot slip previously. So a major adjustment from her and really smart climbing. Crossing through now, slightly different to Emma. Lucy's standing on her inside edge, but making it work for her. Really smart climbing. Yeah. And also wearing a chalk bag, chalking up, which is again very smart. Can she make it work? She's got one go. minute left. No, just, she's sort of <laughs> knew the mistake she'd made on the way down. That was really close. What happened is she didn't go enough. She yeah. went slightly undercut to the stand up, which meant yeah. that she didn't get her weight over her foot. She didn't hit the hold accurately, but she's wasting no time. Jump back off and straight back on. It's interesting, like, uh, how, how long it's taken her to get to that point. But once she's done it once, boom, she's back up, she's stepping across. You build up that muscle also memory, right? have much choice because there's only 30 course, seconds but, left on the clock. But in terms of executing that sequence, right? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Like, no, you really learn that, that, that message Yeah, definitely. She does have 20 seconds left, but she looks to gutted. not pull back on it. She's going to be gutted. She had yeah. the finish hold right there. Yeah. Uh, not the massive jug that everybody would want to finish on, unfortunately. It's a tiny little pebble, so she couldn't uh, reel it back in once she once she touched it, unfortunately. There really aren't many jugs no, out there. No, it's not a jug-friendly comp. <laughs> no. um, I once had a reoccurring dream that I was doing a competition and there was just hidden jugs everywhere that only I could find. That's a different story for another day. Let's focus on if Alex only, John, if only. Yeah, if only. And Molly Thompson-Smith, of course. Um, so we're getting big, nothing but big hitters in this final. International athletes all around, and uh, none more so. Well, than, straight on the yeah, wall. Than Alex. 
You were talking earlier about uh, the success uh, Molly had, um, obviously coming back from that long injury and then um, doing so well in, in her uh, coming back onto the scene. Um, oh, wow, well, sorry, we've got we to gotta talk about Alex. That is impressive as well. Both him and Yannick absolutely Alex flying through. is a Frankenjura local, so you would expect nothing less on that fucking petty sticks. Pure sticks that last hole. A little bit of friendly competition between Yannick and Alex, that's for sure. But wow, what a performance. That was a flash there. And Molly is jumping back yeah. up on the slab. But let's see Alex on the screen now. I didn't know if he was going to stick this. He didn't flip the right hand, which meant he wasn't in a great position. Two jumps of that. Yeah. And there he goes. He hits it. He sticks it. And see that swing. The left hand keeps him on. Yeah. That was... He Very got, risky for and he got there. just a marginal toe drag across this volume as he went through, which maybe just slowed, <laughs> slowed, slowed him down, down ever so slightly. Bit. Yeah, um, but certainly the two Frankinger or two German locals uh, are uh, making short work of the crack, as you would expect. That was super impressive, just essentially one arming a uh, uh, one finger ring lock. We just saw Molly have another slip on the slab. It's maybe not her preferred angle, but we have seen Molly in previous events at the World Championships in Bern. She had her best ever boulder performance, you know, after some major injuries. Um, and we saw her cruise some very hard slabs at that competition, so she, we know she can do them. Molly is 26 years old and she's also qualified for the Olympic qualifiers series so again she's going to be one that has been really ramping up the training in this off season for an olympic ticket if you're in the olympic qualifier series you're the only ones left that can secure those tickets yeah. you know so this is it's, it's a, a really important year for our sport and um yeah these athletes have been fighting hard this off season you know this is kind of the first run out for them yeah and uh you know they all want it so much and that's that's what it's kind of so hard you wish they could all go to the, uh, yeah. the olympics but nope <laughs> they can <laughs> only be a few so uh yeah obviously you were lucky enough uh, to qualify in the last time round. yeah um, yeah so of the athletes we've seen here um only alex uh, is a current olympian we've got a lot of athletes qualified for the oqs the olympic qualifier series but yeah alex Mangos is an olympian and him and I, he and I were at the, the Tokyo Olympic Games, which is a pretty magical moment for our sport, the first Olympics. Yeah, but um, yeah. I'm sure we can see some of these athletes that are in our finals tonight at the next Olympics in Paris this summer. Incredible. Can't believe it's come around so quick. But anyway, back to the athletes. we got Molly. Making Just progress. Clock running down now. Pretty sure this will be really her opportunity. She's got to take her time, but also execute. 45 Ooh, seconds. She slips on oh. the left hand. She does get the zone, yeah. but just pings on that. And Molly does. She's super strong in her fingers and in her body. So when she hit the hold, you could see she started pulling. And actually, that's what was her downfall. There, she yeah. pulled too hard. Her hand slipped off. Absolutely. And Molly um, is actually a previous Quiff winner as well. So is Alex Magos. So you know, it's definitely. They're capable of winning these competitions, and Molly just showing her experience and ability to calm herself, knowing that that's clock sticking down. There are less than 20 seconds left on the clock, but she is here, and she wants that top. Yeah, she can't gain anything more. She's got the zone. She's secured that. All she can gain is the final hold, and the clock is just not going to allow her to do that. And we can see there's yeah. a smile, but there's a look of disappointment too, and that is understandable. Yeah, that opportunity, you know, that's. What what these finals come down to, right? Those tiny little margins of error um, between success and failure. And because the clock, you know, the clock is such a restriction in this, they're all capable of doing these climbs, right? It's just the time restriction and the, the number of attempts that's really. Uh, I, you say that, but I do often think that finals can expose major weaknesses because the styles can be quite wild. And I think some athletes have those holes in their repertoire, you know, and often the finals can expose that. And, you know, there's a boulder coming up later on that really might. <laughs> expose some weaknesses for uh, climbers. Like, so. Yeah, it might expose a lot of things. Yeah, I, I'm going to go with the disagreement and say I don't know if all of the climbers are capable of doing all of the climbs. And uh, yes, they train to do that, but we've got athletes of many different calibers. And I, I, I do think most of the climbers can do most of the climb. Yeah, I, I do agree. Yeah. Somewhat, but yeah, it's uh, it's quite fascinating. I think uh, Holly, though, here, looking yeah. very comfortable. She made short work in the semi-final as well on uh, a lot of the climbs, so she's so good and confident on her on her feet. 
You don't get to be British champion without flashing sounds yeah, like that. Yeah, she is the current British champion. She won Plywood Masters um, just last weekend. You know, she's on good form and looking casual. Uh, in the men's, we've got Daiki. He is not looking as comfortable on the start of move of this here. He's kind of feeling around, trying to get something. Holly on screen, though, you see just how little there is. You can't actually see the holds because her hand and feet are covering them. A big smile as she tops it out and a really, really quick send for her. You know, that flash yeah. is going to be super important. But also, just well, just think, what's that doing to, to Molly's head and the other athletes who failed yeah. as she goes and sits back down with, with that first, first five in her pocket? And more rest time, of course. Um, you know, you're just not spending as many attempts on the climb and that's all going to add up but um, yeah Daiki here really struggling with this pull-on position as you, you know we were both talking before about how poor the foothold was and the, ha the handholds also are pretty marginal so I'm surprised he's not getting established in the finger lock but I can also understand it as well because it's not an easy pull-on. Yeah and we haven't mentioned you know we've got athletes from all over the world here we've got Yannick Loewe and Alex Magos from Germany we've got Daiki here from Japan Daiki is an experienced athlete even though he's only 20 years mm. old and, you know there's a lot of very strong athletes from Japan the competition is first yeah. in that country and he's also a World Cup finalist oh, last year he oh, made God. the finals at a World Cup so you he's know, no slouch. He is no slouch <laughs> and he also pulled qualified yesterday with 300 points that means he did not fall off in our qualification round not once 30 boulders flashing them all so to see him struggling here I'm, I'm gonna say it's, it's a little surprising actually yeah for sure maybe it's just a style of, uh, of movement you know um, but these guys they train on everything so it, it is surprising that he's not not doing it is and he's pulling on and shaking his head immediately and I'm not sure if that's maybe a skin thing or if he just isn't comfortable he is one of the shorter climbers so maybe it just feels like a really long way for him but no he's he's not looking happy there and the clock is ticking down we're just yeah. over a minute to go it, to me uh, it kind of looks when he's putting his feet on he's putting two uh, one foot on the right hand side and one foot on the left hand side potentially maybe he could try putting two feet on yeah, the right hand side yeah he just tried that and that's when he jumped straight up did he? Okay. <laughs> he didn't even try yeah, the move, that. so he's going to try it again Here though, so you, yeah. maybe he heard you, but um, yeah. yeah, he just doesn't seem to be able to get to grips with this, and I don't know, I wouldn't want to be throwing into yeah. that. It's that left hand on the cut, he's not, not getting much out of it. And you saw him just ping off there really aggressively, that's going to be taking some skin off his hands. Yeah, uh, there's, uh, the hold is obviously blocked, there's a, inside that little cluster there's a, another separate little blocker as well. So both the first hold, the first left hand hold is blocked, so there's crimps yeah. behind that and little um, screw-ons stopping them holding that higher up, making the hold worse and then again we have the hold they're going to like you said John is blocked the next hold and the hold after also blocked nothing but blockers um, so now we're going to welcome the uh, top finalists uh, qualified they were the only people to do four boulders in the semi-final round so we've got Max Milne and Jenji Kasparhugo both um, qualified for the Olympic qualifier series, so they will be competing in Shanghai, May, Budapest in June, looking for those Olympic spots, very much capable of qualifying both of these athletes, having a really good round in semi-finals, both of them chopping every single boulder in semi-finals, and both having great qualification rounds too. And we say, you know, they topped all the boulders, but... They didn't just top them, they absolutely cruised them. They were mm -hmm. operating on what looked like a completely different level. Very, very calm, collected. I mean, Jenja here, you can see, is just cruising across this yeah, valley. And, uh, I don't want to jinx us, so I'm not no. going to say. I'm going to wait and watch, but yeah, yeah. watching Jenja on the slab is Poetry. pretty magical. Poetry in motion right there. So let's uh, see how she gets on on this last move. Got plenty of time. What's really interesting to see on the men's side is as this, as the as we come out, the people coming out last are finding it harder. Maybe it's a conditions thing. It really might be a conditions thing. It's hard to say. You know, we have six climbers, and yeah. the whole will change slightly within that. But how drastically is hard to say. I Max also one of the shorter athletes in this round. Maybe it doesn't feel as comfortable for him. He's definitely. Like, I do think he's capable of doing this. That's for, for sure. sure. And, it almost looks like he needs to go with a little bit more aggression and yeah. when he's step up the pace. I think we almost didn't see Max kind of get into his gears in the semi-finals round. He just looked so comfortable. Um, so yeah, it would be great to see him kind of step up here. Jenya, good shot of her. 
on the slab there. Big smile from her. Genuine. Yeah. I was going to say, she's probably the best slab climber that I've ever seen. I didn't want to say it when she was climbing. I didn't want to jinx her. Um, but she's gone away this off season. Really worked her weaknesses. Come back looking strong, looking fit. But she's not lost that movement. She's not lost that flow. And I think that that's really impressive. But Very more eyes on Max now because he's out there on his own on the mat after a round like he had in the semi-finals. It must be quite a hard place to be for Max right now to yeah. know other athletes have topped this boulder and then to not be getting up there. It's, it's a bit similar to Daiki, uh, you know, just struggling with this first move and um, yeah, there's nothing worse than coming out onto a boulder and just struggling with the first move. I think that's always the worst situation. You want to feel like you can at least get established yeah, and have a fight. Yeah, a little bit. And, and you just know a, max, a climber of Max's quality, when he grabs that finger lock eventually, you know, he's going to be having a good shot at completing the rest of the boulder for sure. Just needs to find the established position. Yeah, there we go. There it is. Yeah. Going for the single mono. See if he can flip it. He there we go. Secured the zone. Yeah, just got to flip it now. It's a little bit stuck in the slot. He's going for it from uh, top down. He's changed his Amazing. mind. He hasn't flipped. He's just gone up anyway. But now he is not in a good position. And he if can't he can get make, his finger I, out. He, he needs to throw. I don't think he can do anything else other than try. Doesn't yeah. quite make it. Unfortunately, that's the position we saw Alex Magos in earlier. Being slightly taller yeah. allowed him to get a little bit more bend and push out of his legs. Because Max didn't flip. He wasn't yeah. able to create any momentum here. You can see he's trying to move his hips around. He's teetering with his feet, and there stranded. was quite a big foot slip, I think, from the right foot just before he went. But it didn't look like a position that he could explode out of. Clock's yeah. ticking down, but yeah, unfortunately the uh, the footholds are not great either. His, his eyes have changed. His edge has changed, and he wants this, but that clock is not yeah, going to allow enough time for a top. I don't think. Unfortunate slip again there. Out of time, unfortunately. He's going to be devastated with that. Um, Max is a man who seeks perfection, so um, you know he'll he'll regroup. He'll you know try and reset. I do think he really needed to kind of step things up there, and he was able to do that in the allocated yeah. time. So it's good to see an important zone to get as well. Let's not forget, you know, this competition. It's tops and then zones. That's how it's scored, and then we go to attempts to top and then attempts to zone after that. If Max had walked away without a zone, that would be a lot worse. Yeah, so at least he got the zone, but you know he was—he had that top hold in his sights, and he's gonna it's gonna be a bitter taste left in his mouth yeah, after that one. Somewhat keeping pace with the pack, but yeah, we have seen tops on uh, both climbs, uh, the male and female. So. You know, there's still a lot to play for, three boulders still to come, and we're going to see the uh, brother and sister, Jack and Faye, getting started. But here's a bit of an overview as to where we are at the moment. Um, hopefully these are up-to-date scores. They're obviously unofficial at this point, but you can see we've had tops from Alex and Yannick. I think we might be out of sequence here. Yeah, apologies, folks. Um, obviously these results... Um, are delayed getting them through the system um, so we'll get you some up-to-date ones but we did see on those results that you know Yannick and Alex out there ahead with those tops as well and you know the girls who've topped managed tops on the first female border that's going to be really essential going forward absolutely and uh, this one for the men is fair to say unusual Really interesting. Yeah, to see I'm how excited they read it. Let's talk about it. Okay, it's a handstand cartwheel boulder. They think they forced it, have they? We are about to see. Yeah. It looks like Jack's about to try and cheat it. Can he? Yeah, that's the question. The right foot is not great at all. So, so. he wants to step his left foot up and then he's going to drop his right hand down and then start pushing. And his sister Faye, just to his left, is fighting to get established on her second boulder as well. This is a jump up to the right red start hold and you want to kick your toe hooks in to the one just below it. It's a hard place to be when you can't get established on a boulder in a final because all the eyes are overlooking at you. Jack though yes. is established. Let's see how well he can cartwheel. Yeah, this is it. Groundbreaking moment. The I am a big fan of the cartwheel. Yep. Leah Crane, my coach for the Olympic Games, nice. she's a big fan too. She'll be watching this. He's doing it. He's in. We've got to get the climbing on screen. This is next level. We're in handstand territory. So he's got to get across to the zone. This is a boulder set by uh, Max Ayrton. Uh, he's been wanting to set this in a competition for years. 
and now he's got his chance and Jack has almost executed it perfectly. I wasn't sure how the climbers would feel about this. Yeah. We talk about kind of circus and just the sport progressing in different ways, but you know it's different, it's new, it's fun and it is testing them and For Jack sure. had a huge smile on his face there but probably quite cleverly took his chalk bag off after that attempt because I imagine yeah. there's not much chalk left in it after oh, being upside get, down. Getting it back on again. Here we go. Oh, there we go. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's it. We've seen our first cartwheel of the comp. Also, Faye, she did just get established on this boulder and got started to get generate. progress and generate yeah. move momentum on it. So, yeah, you go. she's pulled back on, her feet are in, she's got established, and she gets to fight her way up now. Yeah making short work of uh, that first move but trying to like turn 180 to point uh, to get uh, her left hand more positive so she can release up with the right. Yeah, and I almost feel sorry for the women because I think all eyes are going to be on the men's climb here. <laughs> yeah. Great work from Max Ayrton actually forcing this yeah. and making it work. You can see he's really pushing through his shoulders. This bit is, it's not easy and I asked Max, is the top section of this climb hard? And he said, oh, that's where the climbing starts. <laughs> the cartwheel is yeah. just to get you to the actual boulder. Yeah, well, I, I mean... I'd expect nothing less from Max, but that, that first start move is is pretty special. It is, and, and uh, also, do you know, Jack's not got the zone yet, yeah. so he's not been awarded for all of this effort. <laughs> Neither has Faye. She's really fighting on this climb, and she's stuck the second hole. Here Big slip from her left hand, but can she get her foot up this time? Yeah. She's really fighting and unfortunately drops there. Jack is back upside down. I was going to say back up on the wall, but he's back upside down on the wall. Yeah, and he, it, you know, he is learning on every oh, attempt because so he's getting closer and closer to it. I think he's uh, definitely got a I sequence in mind. I wish we could give them more time. <laughs> yeah, but they are running out. We've got 20 seconds left and he's pulling back on gonna he's try gonna try something different yeah the palm oh that looked like it might it work. work i think yeah. that would have worked but not enough time and you know a round of applause for jack and Faye. they're both given a really good effort and unfortunately not being awarded his own but i don't wish feel like they both deserved yeah. it so what what good fighting from both the mcdougall's there i just think it's super impressive you know the climbing this this competition the climbing works international festival has been going for i think 17 years or something. 17 Years. This is 17 17 years. and they're still pushing the sport forward like trying to do new things trying to bring it forward and uh, we really and appreciate that Max has wanted to put this yeah. in an international event for some time and he's done it so hats off that's good effort yeah I think uh, obviously with it not being a uh, IFSC full event there's a little bit more uh, ability to try new things uh, I'm not sure if you've been able will be able to do that in a, in a World Cup or World Championship, but um, yeah. I don't know, let us know if you would want to see this in a World Cup and we can start a position yeah. for it. I kind of want to see it. I, I want to see I it. I quite like it. I'm enjoying seeing something different well, and testing the climbers in a different way. And I'm a big fan of handstands. Um, yeah, I think so the only next evolution on this would be then uh, for instead of it to be a slow cartwheel, will eventually be like some kind of dynamic. I have cartwheel. heard that for safety reasons, yeah, of course. we're not allowed this in World Cups. Yeah. So maybe fast might make it even less safe. But yeah. I'm here for it, John. Yeah, you can't have competitors like plummeting onto their neck. <laughs> but back to the climbers <laughs> on screen, we've got Emma Rachel Edwards and Aidan Dunn. Emma, he, she's up, she's established, yeah, and she's into awesome the meat effort. of this climb. And this is a really physical boulder for the women. It is fighting the whole way up. She really needs to stay connected. Oh. Big slip from her falls down and is looking quite fatigued after that. Aiden, meanwhile, is struggling to get established. He looks like he knows what he needs to do. He just doesn't look like he wants to do it yet. Yeah, that was an awesome effort um, from, um, from Emma on there. And she... She looked like she looked confident. She looked like she had time. Just slipped off slightly. Maybe the blocker there. You could just see with her left hand, um, meaning she can't get deep enough really to to oppose. And, and yeah, just you know, right Emma's going. got the zone on that, and she got yeah. a top on the first border. That's going to be really crucial yeah. for her. And quick and and quickly as well. Mm -hmm. um, so. Yeah, fingers crossed uh, Aiden's going to find his way into the cartwheel. Um, Jack made short work of it. But you were saying earlier uh, you'll see, see Jack climbing a bunch and you know, he's, he's very, very good technically, good at figuring things out, good on the slab, very flexible. So Yeah, yeah he's, uh, he's also quite a creative climber, I think. He's good at figuring out what works for him on the wall, which I really enjoy watching Jack climb. I think he's great to watch on the slab and this is the most slabby it's going to get 
get for him in this round. Yeah, so absolutely. good that he's able to get established, but again, unfortunately, no zone for him. And Aiden doesn't seem to be able to figure out how to get his teeth into this, how to get involved. Um, I hope we see him figure that out because it is hard when you don't get going on a block. Yeah, so um, the way they've set this uh, foot sequence, the first foot chip for the men is really, really uh, vertical. So they're trying to force a right foot, left foot high. Um, but obviously that makes it very, very insecure and hard to pull on with these small handholds. So, yeah, it's a tricky one for Aiden. I've been there where you just can't get established and it is heartbreaking. Emma, meanwhile, is up and on the right hand side of your screen. She is fighting. She's going to need to really battle through these last holes. They are not Here we go. very positive at all and unfortunately doesn't quite stick it. Just looking a little fatigued there. That's a very so. narrow compression that she's coming into. I think in order to make that work, she's going to have to go a lot slower. You can see she yeah. was moving a lot as she came into that second hand. And yeah, just too much movement isn't going to work. Yeah, I'm surprised. And Aiden's to... hands are, are firing off. Those, the start holds are terrible. I, I went up and felt them, and yes, we did, I was yeah. quite surprised by how bad they were, um, and that they have to be in order to force the sequence. Exactly. So, yeah. 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 Nice that we know it worked from seeing Jack, but yeah, not easy for Aiden right now. And I wonder if, as on the, the first boulder for the men, whether coming out later again, the holds get sweatier and sweatier, whether that's going to uh, affect any of the others. Yeah, it's, uh, I'm curious to, to find out. And here we go. Emma back on. In fairness to her, she has made absolute mince me out of the start of this time. Really, really has, impressive. Yeah. Um, Looking strong through those first moves and then just faltering towards the end, but regardless, great to secure that zone. Absolutely. So that's uh, the end of that rotation. Um, we're going to go to our third competitors. On, we're, if you're just joining us now, we're on the second boulder of this four boulder tour. Um, so we're going to have Lucy Garlic and uh, Yannick Chloe. Here we go. So let's see what Lucy and Yannick make of this. Um, obviously they'll be aware from sort of crowd reactions and things, competitors coming back into isolation, uh, how people have progressed so far. Um, Yannick, in fact, uh, was the first person to come out um, onto M1 and do it. So he'll be full of confidence after absolutely smashing that first boulder. Yeah, I think Yannick will be. I'm not sure how I'll feel about the cartwheel. I don't actually know. I know. I think Magos might be loving it, but I'll, Yannick, I'm not so sure. But Lucy Garlic. Looking strong here, yeah. can she get into this small space? She's made it work for her foot up, comes into match, and now she's heading up to the crux that here we've we seen. Really oh. narrow compression and comes spinning off again. That left Yannick's hand on. firing yeah. off. Yeah, Yannick's on as well, making short work of this. Uh, really impressive. Spread nice and wide, distributing the weight evenly. That's, he's looking very casual through here. Incredible. He's looking casual, but his head's getting redder by the moment. <laughs> it really is, surely, yeah. And uh, here we go, the one-arm dangle. Is this it is a dangle if you're upside down, um, John? Yeah, okay, well, uh, yeah, the one-arm I'm not sure what we call it, but... <laughs> <laughs> it's a thing. He's doing stuff. It uh, is not over yet. He needs yeah. to keep tension with the feet in order to bring his hand around. It's, it's got his knee on, he's got his shin on, he's doing everything that he can. Oh my goodness, he's been upside down now for probably 30 probably seconds. Probably too long. Yeah. But his hand, he's got his hand to the arrest. He looks good here, his knee is on. He's bringing his second foot in. Alan. What are we seeing here, John? This so is wild. Incredible. He has turned it, but he's still not got the zone. Oh, oh, no! A butt slip! A butt slip for Yannick Chloe. Doesn't get him the zone. And the same for Lucy. And the same for Lucy. But oh, Yannick was on that boulder for a long, long, long time. And he needs to get back on pretty quick time if he wants that zone in that top. I mean, shoulders of steel is uh, a fair assessment there. That was absolutely incredible. Just one arm press for a substantial amount of time. That's got to have taken its toll. I mean, 
I know he's fit. I know he's going for the Olympics, but that's that's got to power you out, right? I don't know. I don't think Yannick gets powered out. I'm not going to lie. I've uh, yeah. with him outdoors, and I don't think I've ever seen him get tired. <laughs> I've got, yeah, and in the gym as well, you know, this this guy can just keep going. So um, we saw him do a one armor on the first boulder, yeah. John. You know, if you can that's do a one armor casually mid comp, like final round, I don't. Yeah. I don't think I feel you know like what that's out is, but Lucy's back up and on your screen here now. You can see big progress from her. Can she make this narrow compression work? She needs to squeeze real hard and not let her hands fire off. Ah, Left yeah. hand fires yet again. Yeah, that seems to be the way for everybody so far. Just um, left hand going, causing, causing that helicopter spin off really frustrating for them because they seem to be making consistent attempts to that point and then getting shut down by this move so there's not many other options as well um, to consider on something like that so maybe it's a small it body is position quite a basic thing. boulder yeah. in the sense of movement but I, in the sense of climbing and moves but I think the movement and the nuance of that movement is going to be essential yeah. for success on that climb Yannick I said I didn't think it'd get powered out, but I did like a little fire there, you were right, John. Yeah, I think it, I mean... All yeah. of that effort earlier for no reward. Yeah. Well, he rewarded the crowd, they loved it. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see um, if he can give it one more push, also, 30 seconds left. not struggling at all to get established and get up into this position, making those crimps of massive oh, Lucy. Lucy. She sticks it. the narrow compression, can she top it? What an effort. Yeah. Yeah. Well done, yes, Lucy. Match. Really, really impressive from Lucy and the same wow. with Yannick making his way through the clock is ticking Yannick needs to get moving here oh he went too fast and he lost the balance yeah. position just like when you're the right way up upside down your hips <laughs> massive if they come away from the wall so will you <laughs> yeah so Lucy uh, sticking with it great tenacity there she had at least I think three or four attempts potentially just to um, so hold, hold that move and yeah, yeah tenacity great work to describe that because wow yeah. to keep fighting and keep pushing on a powerful boulder like that is not something you see very often that success comes after you've had multiple of those so For sure. fair play Lucy looking strong and uh, next out, uh, Molly Thompson-Smith and Alex Magos. Um, Molly going to be, I would think, in uh, a much more enjoyable place for her. She's, uh, I can't imagine powerful. she'll like the start and getting on here. But at least she's it's a little still. nervous in the run-up, but I think yeah. once she's on, there'll yeah. be no stopping her. And same with Alex, you know, once he's yeah. up in this handstand, he flipping loves a handstand. Molly, little slip from her, she jumped up there. Yeah, not her favourite kind of style, this very first pull-on, but yeah, I think once she's up, she'll be away. Um, Alex, Alex handstands a lot. He does a yeah. lot, a lot, a lot of handstands. Hand. So um, I think he'll really quite enjoy this. I think the pros call it hand balancing. That's the, uh, the I've term. I've never heard uh, that before. Yeah, the balancers out there. Um, so uh, Alex making very, very quick work of that. Um, again, looking like he's got a bit of time on here. He's feeling super confident. As you say, all, all the sand but he's not training. And he's now in the full split and he's off the wall. A surprise. I think here, what we saw Yannick do is kind of came into a little frog position. Yeah. And that meant that he was able to keep his hips in close. Alex opting for a slightly different method, not working there. But Molly is up and Molly. away. And I think she will enjoy these next moves. This is a really short boulder. Just a couple of moves and she's already looking to come into that finish hold. She Here does aggressive and really confident as she flips into that yeah. and makes it work. You know, Molly's so good on the steep. She's such a powerful climber and, uh, you know, as you said before, pretty basic sequence for her to read. But you saw that. She was disappointed with that. It did take her quite a, well, I think it was three attempts maybe to get up and establish yep. and those attempts really could cost her. For sure. Um, yeah, she's walking back across the mat towards us and um, despite topping the boulder, she's not looking happy with herself. But, wow, did she look strong on that final move. Oh, there's the Mega Splits. Legendary Splits. Magos looking to cheat the boulder there. I thought he would be loving the handstand and wanting to get it back into it as quick as possible. But, yeah. but no, unfortunately not. And I, I wonder if the root setters are starting to sweat a little bit now because, <laughs> you know, Jack got super close, Yannick got super close, and I think they might be expecting Alex to really enjoy this and find it relatively easy because he does a lot of handstanding. Yeah. So, I, yeah, it's, this is fascinating. But it's, it, it's such a complex thing to, to come out to, you know, 
I just wonder whether sometimes you can overthink a climb, potentially, you know, he feels like it's a strength and then he can't execute, maybe that starts to play on his mind, but... Yeah, but he's a World Cup medalist, he's, he's 31 years old, he's an Olympian, he's the, yeah, on the Olympian here, he's, yeah. he's qualified for the OQS, the Olympic Qualifier Series, he's looking to be a double Olympian, you know, he knows how to perform under pressure and he knows how to kind of compose himself in that moment, sure. so I think... Yeah, I don't think it'll be weighing on him so much, but I, I do think he knows the clock is ticking down and I now he has to decide, does he go back into the handstand method or does he try to cheat the boulder? Um, not struggling at all with bling on and getting up into this position. Yeah. The crowd want to see it and, you know, so do we. Yeah, I think um, he's definitely committing to this now. Obviously, we've only got 35 seconds left on the clock. Um, that's coming out of the handstand again and he's had enough. He says, uh, no more. But that's Danker. opened up the competition. Max Milne yeah. didn't get a top on the first one. Was, so he needs walked away a bit gutted. And I, yeah. I wonder if there's a little glint in his eye because mm. I I think there was some expectation that this would have been done by now. Yeah, 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 for sure. So you've got the two people who topped the first boulder and not topping the second boulder, so it does open it up well, for it brings Max it back. and for the other athletes too. Just Daiki coming out here now. He could bring it back. Yeah, Daiki and um, Holly just getting ready for the next rotation. Um, Not only has no one got the top on M2, no one's got the zone yet, so really <laughs> yeah. important to know. Here we go. Uh, quick step on, straight into the palm. Really a solid. Aiden palm Dunn there. really struggled with that move, so it's impressive to get, get oh, it to it. Holly looking super strong in that pull on. We know that yeah. that's challenged some of our other climbers. Molly taking a few attempts just to get established, but Holly straight into the biceps and the squeeze there. Yeah, Holly uh, is looking on fire at the moment, as you say. Uh, absolutely dominating the recent competitions here in the UK. And um, she seems like she's got. It's just, I keep saying, it just seems like she's got time. Um, and absolutely smashing that last move. What a flash. Yeah. What a flash. She's happy with that. And Daiki just, he's fitting in that position so much better. Maybe being a little bit smaller helps get into this box. And he's coming out of it. Here we go. That's Has he gone incredible. too low though? He's bent his left arm. Can I'm he press it out? I'm, oh, he's bringing yes. his foot down. Amazing. Great to see. The crowd have got their hands in, the, their head in their hands. Yeah. Everyone is watching with bated breath here. Oh, oh. <laughs> a little wobble oh, there. That was a fantastic effort. Incredible. Incredible. So, if there was a sequence, I think he thinks in his head, maybe that's the sequence. I'll see if I can execute again. Uh, two minutes 30 left. Very, very impressive. Managing to come out of that and get established in the bridge. And straight back up into there again with time to spare. So, yeah. doesn't seem like he's getting tired. No time to waste here. Because, as you said before, you haven't even got the zone at this point. There's still a bunch of climbing still to do on top. And the climbing up there, we know, is not easy. So I expect the root setters were hoping to get more athletes through this first section. Well, here we go. He's almost straight back in. Just needs to shuffle that right His leg down. His left hand is currently not on a handhold. He is yeah. just on the volume. <laughs> He's dead. He's oh, looking no. so gassed. A lot of time upside down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's taking a breather, that is going to take it out of you. Um, not only physically demanding, but you know, you're upside down. So I'm really hoping they leave these ones up because I want to try that. Yeah, <laughs> handstand is your jam. <laughs> yeah. Uh, here we go, trying a different sequence now. So this is only the potential break, but I think Max Ed and the uh, root heads for this boulder has figured out a good way to protect his sequence. Come on, Daiki, this is it. Last possible attempt, really. The amount of time it takes to transition over. One minute left. Yeah, unfortunate that we've not seen many athletes kind of progress past this start sequence. Um, I do still think it's great for Max yeah. to, to try something new and to for keep sure. the evolution of the sport going. Yeah, and I, I think sometimes, both as a root setter and a climber, you've got to take risks, right? Um, risk reward, and it's, it's very cool to see something new. Um, Coming and through. it's so nearly worked so many yeah. times. Yeah, and um, we've still got some people to come out, you know. Uh, we got Max, uh, sorry, just, we've just Max. just got Max just left, Max so left. it's all eyes on Max. Yeah. 
Uh, again, and he's, of he's, course, Genya, and the women. Yeah, he's renowned for a bit of funk, though, Max. So I'm sure he'll uh, he'll be able to give it a good shot. And also, it's opened the door for Max. I do think he'll have been disappointed after that first boulder. If he can top this boulder, he's back in the runnings because he will be the yeah. only athlete with two zones and the and the top of that point. Yeah. So I think you know I, I used to absolutely love being in this position, coming out to climb last when knowing nobody else had done it. Yeah. Um, because yeah, it just feels like it almost if you're a free pass if you can. Yeah, go. you could just swing, right? You yeah. Can swing yeah. for the fence. Um, so let's see if he swings for the zone. Oh, what the so. top? We'll take either. Yeah, take either. Um, and the same for Ginger. Uh, she is. Uh, absolutely dominated this event so far. Let's see how she gets on with this. I think it she'll make this Looking strong in that pull yeah. on as well. Jenya just seeming to have found her groove this year and it's great to yeah. see. Yeah, Jenya is cooking with gas. And Max is quick up into that handstand. Yeah. I guess really it's like cool climbing from both of these athletes. Incredible. Jenya just absolutely destroying that climb. Yeah, Jenya looking in cruise mode. Phenomenal. Max too, that was pretty wild for Max and it looks like we are going to see Here we go, Max first Hill. full rotation, full 360 for Max there. Wow, great climbing from him. He just As needs to said. get hold of that zone so he's yep, secured which it. Which secured. Now he gets to start the climb according to Max Urgent. And so. As you said, that second zone potentially going to be really, really important. Um, especially after the disappointment of the first climb. But yeah, that... Uh, I slip from Max there, but a really big smile yeah. on his face there. I think he enjoyed that. that. Yeah, the next section, um, you know, we, we, as you say, we were chatting to um, the route setter, different Max, and he was saying that actually it's still quite a bit to do up there. I do think Max Ayrton, the route setter, has just breathed the sigh of relief <laughs> yeah. because he's proven it works. Yeah, and the same for Gary, you know, it, it being the chief, you know, the responsibility of saying yes or no to giving it a try, so he's going to be psyched as well. I think um, if Max can get a top here, um, that's uh, a pretty good effort from the team. Great shot of the crowd there, all packed in. This event sells out in minutes, minutes yeah. for tickets to be in this room. So thank you to those of you who are joining us. But yeah, cool to see it's such a packed crowd as well. It's incredible. The Climbing Works always put on such a great show. Max Milne, he's really looking for an Olympic spot this year. He's won a silver medal at a Boulder World Cup. He knows how to perform when it counts. And he looked like he was on another level in yeah. semi-finals. Not finding his groove on Boulder 1 here in the final, but really starting to step up on this second climb. Come on, Max. Totally reset after that first boulder, and now looking like he might be in with a shot if he can figure out how to get round onto this uh, next section. So he's got to teeth around this um, really slopey volume he's to get his He's feeling around. Hand. He's trying yeah. to find something, so he's looking for a screw hole there or something to help him turn this volume. He's got it's to commit. not over, and we've heard the commentator, a live commentator at the venue, saying just that, you know, the climb really does start now. It gets very physical very quickly. Yeah, here we go. He's really got to stand up and try and get all the weight on that Love left arm. There we go. Steps. He's turned, got to turn his feet round. Yes, Max. Oh. His, his feet were slipping just and he was just managing to keep composing himself and yeah. fighting. That was a great effort from him. 55 seconds. I think he's going to give it one more. He looked like he was going to walk away. Just teasing the yeah. crowd there, wasn't he? Teasing, yeah. every, teasing us all. Really impressive compared to how everybody else has approached this climb. And he's just twice gone straight through to zone. Incredible. Sometimes it's like that, you know. You just have that... Oh, he had a Je glint in his what? eye, and uh, you know, when Max gets that glint, he can be pretty dangerous, so He's got to move it'd be quick. great to see, but while the clock is ticking down, just yeah. 20 seconds coming up, but I don't think it's enough time for a top, but I want Max to give it all right until the very end. Yeah, for sure. I think if he can get around here quickly, he knows what to do a bit better with his hand sequence, so he just needs to move quickly, confidently, and really drive up with the feet. There it is, Max. Come on. Big push, big push, big push. The clock starts beeping, it is ticking down. He's got yeah, too established, late. but it is too late, it's over. He's, to in the He's going anyway. Yes, Max. He wants to finish. <laughs> Come on, Max. Come on, Do Max. it anyway. Doesn't it won't count, but not can bother. you make it work? <laughs> the crowd are loving it, and so are we. He's fighting yes. for that match. It won't count. He's out of time. <laughs> the crowd loved it. 
<laughs> Milking the crowd. Yeah, fair play, Max. You know, it was. Sometimes you just want to do the boulder, it right? It is. Percy Bishop in the arena said, "Phenomenal effort," and that it was. Yeah. Fair play, Max, to keep going there. The clock, it was done. He knew it. He'd heard it. He, he didn't care. He didn't care. He wanted to show us all what he could do, and that he did. Yeah, when you got that a boulder as cool as that, a boulder as cool as that, you want to top it, right? It, yeah, it didn't matter. He came down with that smile on his face, and yeah. I think this has really heated things up for the next two boulders. For it's sure. Well, we're officially halfway through now, so uh, yep, we're on to the second half of the uh, the competition. Uh, the men are going to head over onto the right-hand corner, just next to where they were before. Again, this is a really powerful, sapping, full-body workout to pull on into this corner uh, and then... Um, <laughs> You know, they've just really tested the athletes, yeah. you know, they've got, their shoulders are going to be feeling it, and then this pull-on is a really intense, awkward breath um, for the men and for the women. We see the quite basic paddle in terms of the style that we see a lot of these days. It's very straight, but yeah. that means it's going to be quite difficult, and by straight, I mean it's straight up, you're not going around the corner, there's no trickery here, it's just jump and keep moving with your keep hands. Keep paddle, keep and, swimming. You know, <laughs> Years ago, um, when we, were com we started yeah. competing, to say a basic paddle wouldn't be a thing. But yeah. these days, that's what that's what it is. And yeah. Jack, he's up and he's going. Yeah, Mr. Flexible, he is up. Uh, the same. Oh, Faye as so well. close from Jack, but Faye sticks it on her first attempt. Reaches yeah. out to the right, which I think that hold is there just to be a blocker. So she doesn't want to be holding that. But she yeah. made that go. correction, and we see her now setting up for that last move. She's got to go for, with conviction. That was the knowledge from Garrett. Got to really good what hear a it. Moment. Toe hook maybe. No, looking, doesn't need it. Something. She brings oh, the second hand in, gets that match. I think that was a flash. Yeah, quite possibly. Awesome effort from Faye. Um, so, meanwhile, her brother over on Boulder One, um, just getting established again, trying to get sort of, uh, you know out of this little groove of death onto I think the good hold. Jack will make a correction here because he, he just went a little bit too shallow as he jumped last time. And yes, he does brings that second hand in really quickly. Good climbing from him there. Yeah, and now there's this cluster of crimps. There's sort of four or five different parts to this, which he's got to pick his way through. Um, so it's a case of really big move for your left hand to enable you then to get your foot up and then... Yeah, and I don't think he'll be awarded the zone that he went up, grabbed it, touched it, but he didn't stop moving and kind of control that in any way. So I don't think he'll be awarded that. Jack's doing a lot of climbing and not being yeah. awarded very much here, unfortunately. I think he's uh, having a chat with the judge here, just asking whether he got it or not. And uh, there's some nodding going on, so we shall see in the results. But... Um, Good effort from him getting stuck in. Again, his flexibility really helping on yeah, that Yeah, maybe start. he will be awarded it because he, he used it to move to the next hold, so yeah. he could potentially be awarded that. It's up to the judge's discretion at that point. Yeah. Um, and I guess the he did, judge he is did, he did use it to move off, though, exactly. so, yeah. Yeah. Um, here we go again. <laughs> DJ making things pretty, uh, yeah. it's pretty a vibe. spicy in here. It's definitely a vibe. a vibe. Here we go, Jack. Come on. Your time to shine, my dude. Boom. Slam Oh, up. yeah. Looking, looking tired as he's hitting that. Maybe feeling it in his fingers, his forearms, his shoulders yeah. as, he, as he starts taking that ride. You can see there's no connection. He's just kind of falling off. He needs to get his hand way deeper into that hold if he wants to hold that swing. That's what will allow him to bring his second hand in. And like you said before, yeah, getting that second hand in is... is yeah, good. without getting the first hand good, you're not going to be able to bring that second hand round. So that's what we'll be looking for on a more successful try, for sure. For sure. Well, he's done a lot of climbing to get here. We're on the back side of this final. Uh, now we're on boulder three. Our first competitor, Jack McDougall. Still five more guys to come out looking after. Looking comfortable in this pull-on, though. Like, yeah. looking happy in that space he's, there. He's flexy. It's uh, suiting his style, for sure. And he's got to really go for it. Yes, Jack. Good work. Here we go, crimp, crimp, crimp. Well, if there was any question about the That's zone, it. there isn't anymore because he is solid there. Come on, Jack. Come on, Jack. Oof. Looks meaty, this top section. Yeah. 
looks back at, at the border as he walks away. He doesn't want to leave. <laughs> You can see here just how small that hold is, you know, he's crimped right up on that right hand thumb, wrapped over the top, just trying to get something, anything out of it. Hoping the next one's better. Yeah. yeah, and it is a real cluster of terrible fruit. Yeah, yeah, it looks, basically, what Garrett is saying is like, right left, right left, you do, do lots of little movements without yeah, going little anywhere. Yeah, tic-tac, crimpy cluster. Yeah. That's a sentence I've never said before. <laughs> A crimpy cluster, that sounds <laughs> delicious. <laughs> sounds like a breakfast cereal. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Um, okay. Aiden, meanwhile, he is now on the wall and he's going to be looking for some redemption after yeah. the last boulder where he didn't manage to get established. He did quite an aggressive jump there and just bobbled, kind of didn't quite get into the right spot. So yeah. I think we'll see him make an adjustment there. What Jack did really smart, he reached out, pushed against the hold. Jack and Aiden, two of the, the taller climbers of the round, I think Aiden could potentially do it Jack's way, so whether he'll see that or not. Meanwhile, Emma, Rachel is setting up for this paddle and doesn't quite stick it. Just showing how impressive that was for Faye to get that done so quickly. Yes. Aiden back on the wall now, will he adjust or will he just commit more so to try and make this move work? It looks awkward all of a sudden and not having the flexibility like Jack to get his foot up so unfortunately he won't be able to make that slow method work but Emma has stuck the paddle yeah absolutely crushing this boulder now um, eyeing up the last hold she's got to really go with conviction here long way to go to a not that good hold come on stick with it big push Ali nice try and get some opposition to match and there it is Solid top. Yeah, really Took strong top attempt. from her. Yeah. She didn't look super comfortable, but managed to keep her composure, which is essential on a climb like that, where yeah. the match is quite tricky. Just got to get it done, haven't you? Um, Aiden, meanwhile, maybe he's just not quite found the the right position for his hands to enable him to get his foot up like Jack did. Jack was really I, flexible. I think it's a flexibility for Aiden. Yeah. Another look at Emma as she, she matches that top hold there. She actually just lost her foot. Her right foot popped as she hit the top hold. So great for her to be able to stick that and hold it and yeah. keep composed regardless. But yeah, Aiden struggling to really get stuck into this climb as well. And yeah. I hope he's able to figure it out because when he gets into his groove, it's, it's great to see Aiden kind of performing at his best. And it's almost like these boulders haven't allowed for us to see that. Um, they seem to have exposed some weaknesses maybe, um, not being able to get his foot up and struggling to get established on that last one. But I think, you know, he's super strong and it would be great to be able to get to see him on these next moves. So, yeah, I really want to see him stick this first move. And it looks like he's going to try something a little different here, maybe, maybe turning before he jumps. So he's turned that right hand really deliberately, allowing him to maybe potentially rotate a little bit more. Keeps thinking about that foot. Can he make it work? He manages to get it up. Doesn't look happy or comfortable in that position, but can he jump out of it? Yeah, and then... Not quite. Because he, he's just jumping out, it's almost impossible for him to get the hand rotation round, land it, use contact strength to then turn on the shoulder and engage. It's just too much in, in I one don't, motion. I, yeah, it's not allowing him to actually get into the hole yeah. that he's jumping to. His hands point in the wrong direction. He doesn't have enough height. Um, his hips are just driving straight up the wall. There's no rotation there. So yeah, there's a lot of adjustments that need to be made for him to stick this. But I do think if his hand goes in the hold, he's not going to let go. Yeah. He wants this. But the clock is ticking and there's 30 seconds left. Just 30 yeah. seconds. Yeah, unfortunately, Aiden's not having the best round so far. He's, uh, you know, getting an element of frustration coming out. He's had a couple of climbs now where he's not, as you say, been able to to show his true strength and skills. Fingers crossed, this guy we can get established. No, again, it's a blind move to to a Ten slot. Ten seconds on the clock, and he's getting back on. You've got to admire the effort. Yeah, for sure. It's a quick final. You've got to give it every second that's actually available. was his closest go <laughs> yeah. sometimes the clock clicking down can really do that they can yeah. kind of they remove Pressurize you. just yeah. remove all the thoughts and invasions that are going on in your head and just force you to climb and yeah we saw Hayden have his best go as that clock was ticking down but what can Yannick do on that climb and yeah so Lucy's back out yeah and can Lucy keep the pace on this border because this is proving to be an important top for the women yeah so we've had Two tops. 
on F3 and as yet we've not had a top on M1. Uh, we've seen Jack McDougall get the furthest and um, getting established on this sort of cluster of crimps but not quite picking his way through them. Um, so I'm sure Yannick super flexible, he had a good... Um, Lucy, no wetting, no time. Sorry to interrupt no, you, Jack. Straight up there, what a really impressive performance and a good round that she's having. Yeah. I think um, when we were chatting to the root set, as they said, this was the one that they expected to see a lot of tops on. Um, good execution from her. Of course, they've had observations, so uh, she knows exactly what to do, just needs to execute. And also, if she's sat right in front of the wall, you know she'll have heard that this one's tappable. For sure. Yannick facing the other direction and making that jump look really casual because yeah. he was able to lean out. Uh, harder to get established, we know it's more difficult. I think when we see Yannick hit these crimps, he's going to feel really comfortable, and he, he looks like it right now. Wow, Brings his impressive. left hand up, suddenly looking like he knows what to do here as he tic tacked his way through these teeny tiny crimps, moves towards that last hold, it is blocked, celebrates before the match. That is yeah. an impressive performance from him. That's uh, confidence, isn't it, when you can celebrate before getting the match and getting the top secured. Um, he, on the other hand, you know, Aiden's had a really rough round, but this has really played to Yannick's strengths. He's been absolutely dominant so far. Made yeah, good progress on the on the cartwheel as well. I was going to well. say, yeah, he didn't get awarded anything for M2, but he did a really good effort. And can Alex Magos keep pace with his fellow German teammate, Yannick <laughs> Chloe? I think, uh, yeah, it's interesting, as you say, uh, uh, Yannick was the first person to face in, which actually, when you think about it, works really well because then you, when you jump out... If you out, can make it work though, getting yeah. established in that position is yeah. so incredibly physical and these, you know, it's a really similar kind of press yeah, to sure. M2 in some ways because it is a press. Yeah. Molly, meanwhile, stepping on to the women's third boulder and struggling with that jump there. This, these aren't her favourite moves, you know, you can see she looked a little frustrated by that, but I think we can see Molly do this climb, she just really needs to give a good effort. Wow. Alex, big jump from him, he Amazing. didn't face out, but it didn't matter. Taking a wild ride and straight up wasting no time to get to those crimps. Alex, another athlete who's really happy on a crimp, but a little foot slip there, I think yeah. his right foot so slipped. The, so there's a bit of a difference there between him and Yannick, uh, not just on the start, but Yannick went for a toe uh, instead of a heel and really drilled in that right toe which when he released his left hand to go for the second crimp definitely seemed to help pull him into the wall whereas Alex is just popped straight out. Yeah on the screen now you can see just what you were talking about there he's going to put his right foot up and you'll see him put that heel in. Uh, maybe an unusual choice with there not being so much space I think Yannick's toe option was much better um, but Alex is about to pull back on, so we'll get to see him have another attempt at that, I'm sure. An important yeah. zone to secure, though, and Molly really eyeing up this boulder now, pulling back on. She wants some. this. Yeah. She's not just uh, getting the timing right just yet um, and really committing. Needs to give it more room, get some more height and activate. Yeah, Molly's super strong. She has the capability to do this, but... You can see she, she almost isn't attacking it. She isn't going as aggressively as she needs to. Wow. Alex has stuck this first move again. He's up in the crimps. What will he do this time? Will he change? He isn't changing. He's opting for a heel again. If he can make it work, it might help him out. But no, it pops again, which means that he's got no foot there. Um, yeah, interesting that he chose to do that twice. Yeah. Molly trying to stick the first hold of this paddle. If she can stick that, that will be outrageous. I think if um, you know Alex has been making progress uh, on the climb every attempt, like getting a little bit closer, maybe he's being sucked into that heel because he's getting some success. I wonder if he'll change it up and and go for a toe this time. Yeah, Alex, he's he's really great on a crimp, arguably. Yannick yeah. also, so Yannick's got some of the strongest fingers in the world, that's for sure. And he did look very comfortable on those crimps. So, you know, Alex Magos, he's, he's definitely not weak by any standard. So no. the fact that he's struggling on those crimps just shows how terrible they are. Yeah. Come on, Alex. Just one arming it up the wall. Here we go. Come on, Alex. Going for the toe this time. See if he can make it work. He's got to really tweak it in. No. I think even Alex might be getting gassed out now. And Molly sticking the jump. Good work, Molly. She's got to go quick now. Uh, get this executed because she's a couple of attempts behind the rest of the field on this. So see if she can stick the last move. 
full commitment She looks required. a little bit flustered, but she's yeah. definitely capable of doing this. She just needs Good to keep work. that composure, and she does. Come there on, There it is. Nice. So she's keeping pace. Good work, Molly. Um, she looks gutted again, even though she's topped the climb, because similarly to the uh, second one, I think she really felt like she uh, potentially could have done it in fewer attempts. Yeah, I really did believe she was capable of it, and um, I think it'll be hard for her to know that she could have done that in a fewer attempts, yeah. but, you know, this comp is a really great learning going into the season, and it's a very important season, like we said. Meanwhile, all eyes on Alex as he's yeah. on that crimp and just trying to get more. Looked like he wanted to campus. Yeah. Wasn't able to make that toe work, unfortunately, but, yeah, looking, yeah shaking his head as he walks away, looking down at his fingers. It's not often frustrated. we see Alex Magos struggle to hold a crimp. Yeah, looking really frustrated coming off that. He'll know his compatriot. Great Yannick shot of uh, will have done it. The, the gorgeous Labrador on screen there. <laughs> All about the pups. We're on dog watch. Yeah. <laughs> we're on dog watch. <laughs> so uh, we're coming towards the end of this boulder. Uh, Daiki and Holly, uh, our next competitors out, and then finishing up the boulder will be Max and Jenya. So Holly taking her time. She knows she can execute this, just needs to go for it. Here we go. Bosch, first to attempt. Ooh, just slip catching there, it. but she saves it. Amazing work. Daiki getting on into the position, missing the hand. Here goes Holly. Come on, stick with it. Take your time, be precise, confident. Ali, nicely done. Super strong there. Yeah. Absolutely dominating so far. Really impressive. Match it up. There it is. Judges give the raised clipboard. A little puff of the cheeks as she dropped down there. Yeah. That was a, a moment as, as she slipped and managed to save it. A great save. And Daiki, meanwhile, taking quite yeah. a whip just now. Big whip onto, onto his back. Uh, again, he's jumping out, facing outwards, trying to land double hands on the uh, on the blind letterbox hold. So um, certainly one method. See if he adapts or changes. Always difficult when you're making progress to change. Certainly needs to think about potentially another approach. That's four or five attempts and really feeling his wrist in the corner of doom. It's two boulders back to back, heavy wrist workouts for the men. Shoulder, body, wrist, fingers, you name it. Ooh. Ooh, and maybe neck after that too. Yeah. That was a whip. He's uh, certainly been battered He's on this He's going to feel it in the morning. Yeah, absolutely. No hesitation though, back on his feet, brushing those holes and he's been put through his faces in this round after a very dominant qualification round. Absolutely. A really good semi-finals round. To see him kind of struggling so much is is quite interesting, but you know, it's all to play for. Every single round is a new game. Yeah, just resetting between boulders is so important, especially after something so draining as the handstand uh, cartwheel. That's really going to play with your mind, you know. Especially watching somebody like, well, not watching, but hearing somebody like Max uh, eventually do the boulder. But I wonder whether they maybe all snuck a little peek yeah. in because he oh, got sure pretty wild were. in here. I'm sure no one were. was watching what the athletes were doing because everybody was all eyes on Max. But right now, all eyes are on Daiki. Here we go. One minute 20 left on the clock. Every time he's getting a little bit closer to hitting that jug. Um, and then he's got to try and engage and rotate round and then maybe get stuck into the crimps above if he's lucky. Just the one minute left now. Come on, Daiki. It'd be great to see him stick this move after so much effort. He isn't giving up. He's pushing and he's trying so hard and he's getting Oof. so very close. Just yeah. a little bit more accuracy. He needs to get deeper into that hold if he wants to stick it. Oh, he just bumped his head. <laughs> <laughs> and it is, um, it is a really good hold. It's just so far away. And, uh, it is really good, but not for, maybe for two fingers. It's, yeah. it, it's a jump, but it's blocked. Again, this is the a round of blockers. They have put kind of holes in the way to make sure that it's not that good. Yeah. When will the blocking end? <laughs> 
he's out. Forward roll off, and that's it. I think he's potentially with 10 seconds left. Gonna have to call it. Oh no! He's chalking up. He's backing. Come on, Dave. Fair One play. more time. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> He's going again. He's a He's maniac. In. All the way to the buzzer. Fair play. He's still got one more boulder to go, so fair yeah. play going to the buzzer on that he, one. As he walks away rubbing his head, he definitely hit it pretty hard. So, our last climbers on block three. We've got Max Milne and Jenya Kazbakova to seal out the round. And Arnie Whitaker there, young gun, Sam Whitaker, and losing to Whitaker's son, coming on to brush, great yeah, to yeah, see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, straight in prepping. Let's see how Max Milne gets on with the bendy and flexi. Yeah, Max jumping straight on, Jenya opting to spend some time brushing and prepping the holds, but yeah, I think Max will be... Um, Oh, His mood will be enhanced after that second boulder. This, yeah. this is the same method that Jack used to get his right foot up. Just catching the hole. Amazing strength from him. Just catching it, but making it work. What can he do with these crimps ahead? Come on, Max. Get that foot in. Yep, the toe's key. Time to see how much work he's been doing on the Beast Maker this off-season. Can he, he can make it work? And he is now. looking strong. Come on, Max. Come on. Confident, Max. Yes, that's going to be... And same for Jenya, absolutely smashing it. What just a fast rotation. That's it. I could hardly breathe for a moment there. The finger strength Incredible. display of Max there, the execution from Jenya, both athletes yeah. finding the stride. That's a really good flash from Max. It's like, an important flash from Max. Like, having had that disappointment of the first climb. And the way this is scored, it's tops yep. and then zones and yep. then attempts to top and yep. then attempts to zone. Critical. So if Max can get a top on the final boulder, no one can beat him because no one has the zone on the second boulder. Yeah, he's given himself a shot for sure. And it just shows how important it was for him to keep fighting and not give up on that first climb. You know, it almost looked like his head went down for a second and he wasn't going to keep pushing, but that zone has become crucial and will be a huge part of who takes it. Yep, so we're down to our last boulder now, and as Sean is saying there, all to play for. Uh, there's just one more climb. Who is going to take this title? Jenya is looking on really good form. Um, absolutely went under the radar as we were just concentrating on Max over on the far side, but um, she just smashed her block to pieces. So oh, I'm not. I, I need to correct myself. Max did not get the top on that second boulder because he ran out yeah. of time. I totally yeah, yeah, yeah. forgot about that. So yeah, um, it's all to play for still because it's all between Yannick and Max. I think as we head into that final and the same with um, Holly. boulder and Holly and Jenya. Um, yeah, there's there's still a competition going on. Nobody has won yet. Sometimes we do see that, but yeah, I totally forgot that Max did not <laughs> top the second boulder. He, I feel like he deserved it. He deserved it, but it was I out apologize. of the buzzer. And uh, under the radar, Holly and Jenya having this trading blows of three flashes so far. So who's going to blink uh, on this final boulder for the women? Yeah, Hopefully the, the pressure one. gets piled on. Hopefully one does, otherwise annoyingly it will go back to countback, which is never what we want. I also don't want to wish them to fall off, John. Come on now. No, but, but, <laughs> <laughs> you know. but we need the split, Shauna. Um, yeah, no, I know. On the screen though, Jack McDougall and Faye McDougall, yeah. brother and sister, Very having a great time out there. Yes, they've had to fight hard, but it's been such a good round to see them both. Faye only 16 years That's old, incredible. Jack only 18. Jack's on the podium here wow. last year. Here goes Faye. She's just got to get this right hand guppy on the next volume. Really good. And then in cruise mode, Faye yeah. looking here. Can she keep that going all the way to this finish? Jack, oh, Jack just missing pretty the wild jump. There. Come on, Faye. Here we go. No, she dropped off. Oh, yes. Absolutely crushing that. Nodding and Absolutely smiling, really it. happy, and she runs back to the athlete zone. So Jack gets sent the stage right now. He's brushing the holes, suggesting they don't feel that grippy. This is a ideally you set up and you get established, and then you jump over to the black hole. So that's one. Hit the purple hole. Two. 
match the purple hold three and hit the foot four. Boom. So it's not a one two yeah. or a one two three. It's a one two three four in one movement. Yeah. And I asked, will we see anyone stick the purple without the foot? We don't think we will. Will we see someone stick it with the foot, maybe without matching or Here matching without the foot? But that oh. was a one, two, three, four, and that is exactly what Jack needs to do. If he can get that foot to come through a little bit faster, it'll mean he hits that before he's really far away from the wall. So you saw his hips come really far out there. If he can hit the foot with his hips closer in, yep. I think we could see him stick that. That was a great effort from Jack. Yeah, he, every, Quick every replay of favour, <laughs> and I expect a big smile that we'll see on her face. This, I think, this is been named the easiest boulder of the round yeah, so it yeah. could be unfortunate if we do don't get a fight from Holly and Jenya but you know you have to keep performing and you have to keep the pressure on and so yeah, it'll be you can still slip off any of those transition moves through there but as you say uh, looks unlikely at this point it does but I also think yeah it's hard when we we don't get to see that fight we did see it in semi-finals but yeah right now all eyes on Jack as he sets up for this yeah. so very 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 close really there good. for Jack he um, knows what to do and he used his arms really really well there to, to you could see him getting some pull getting the line right and then poof, just not quite nailing that foot as you say that's so critical just to stop the movement in its track yeah not looking like he kind of has enough power to get the height on that but really impressive movement from him and his hands moving really quickly yeah been really impressive showing from Jack uh, both rounds today we've been impressed yeah oh. it's the like same he's quite he's quite low as he goes through that movement he almost wants to get a bit more height so he can engage his biceps a little better and be really quick with that foot but he's looking like he's starting to yeah. fatigue now and oh. you know he's kind of swinging out around and the clock ticks down and he's out unfortunately but super and, close yeah but and yeah again no doesn't get awarded his own there but really impressive climbing from Jack and at such a young age only only 18 years old. Yeah. Well, we've got Aiden and Emma coming out now. Um, fingers crossed for Aiden because he has had a tough tour uh, across this final round and he is just so strong. Um, just needs to find a boulder that potentially suits his style and he can really show the crowd what he can do. Yeah, and I've seen Aiden in training and he's looking in really good shape. He looks super strong and I, this is definitely a boulder that he's capable of doing. Um, can he keep his head up after the disappointment of the previous boulders? We yeah. are yet to see. And, you know, Emma as well having a really good competition. And we know when she feels like, she, it seems like when she feels like she's capable of doing a boulder, she's all over it. So, yeah. yeah, let's see if she can execute that there. Aiden on his first attempt going a bit too casual. I think he needs to get way feistier if he wants to stick this. He needs to attack this with much more aggression. And, and he needs to dig deep if he wants to pull that out after such a tough round. But he's yeah. capable of doing it. Yeah, I think Emma's been climbing so consistently through this competition. She's really slow, steady, precise. It's been a joy to watch her, really. But struggling here to find the right body position. And, you know, it's interesting when you see the first athlete come out and absolutely walk a bit. Like, yeah. they made such light work of that. It was almost, it looked too easy. But yeah. then we see Emma come out and not quite figure it out. So it'll be interesting to see if she's able to make those adjustments and yeah, what it is that she's struggling with. It looked like she just didn't quite find the right body position to me. So when Faye climbed it, uh, she did the cross through to the purple hole, but she'd sort of used a palm instead of the pinch to yeah, start with. Yeah, which allowed her to then reach exactly. down to that tiny purple you can see, yeah. um, which is a little undercut that is a handhold. Yeah, for sure. Great work from her here wonder if she's going to try oh no different sequence but that seems to be working fair play yeah she looks she like she might be able one? to make that work for her and she does yeah really good from her figuring out on the fly looking super strong like great endurance very very fit climber and now just eyeing up that final hold last climb of the event for her can we get a top there it is awesome effort Emma Rachel smashing it. Meanwhile, Aiden has had another couple of good goes on this, but again, similarly to Jack, um, Jack was a little bit closer. He's trying to land that right foot to cut the swing. Jack was really close, wasn't he? He was really yeah. nailing the sequence, and Aiden struggling to kind of piece it all together here, making progress on each attempt, I think. So hopefully, we can see that continue through the remaining yeah. time that he has left.
Um, yeah, so um, here we go. Aiden got a minute 20 left on the clock. There it is. Ah, oh, you saw him there try to go for the foot, and it it looked a lot better. And he's smiling. He knows he's figured it out. Yeah. He realizes he's unlocked the sequence, but now it's the tricky bit of executing it. Yeah. There is so much going on in a competition like this. You've got kind of the mental challenge of figuring it out, the mental challenge of dealing with all the pressure, and then the physical attributes that come into play. Of course, climbing is physically demanding, but you also yeah. have your condition of your skin and everything going on yeah, around the you. Mental the pressure, side. too. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a really difficult sport to be consistent at across all the different aspects right technically physically um, conditions mentally oh I know yeah. John oh yeah <laughs> yeah there we go oh no right foot there from Aiden trying to stick it with just the match looking like it might work for him but I do think it'll be easier and Max did tell us that it will be easier if they can piece all of that together so Aiden just running down the clock now, only a few seconds left. Fingers crossed he can stick this on his last go. He's had such a good competition and unfortunately the final's not been his friend tonight. Let's see if he can finish strong. Oh, oh. so close. Unlucky yeah. Aiden. Oh, yeah, he's starting away. to ride that back end but not quite sticking it. Still giving away to the crowd. Good man. So uh, we move on to the next three, no, sorry, next pair on our final boulder, Lucy Garlic and Yannick Flo. It's the final boulder, it's gone so fast, John. I know, right? Just only a few more people left and uh, at the moment still pretty much all to play for. It is. If Yannick does this, then yeah. it might change things. Yeah, so, yeah. 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 Lucy looking to secure a place Lucy on the podium. Lucy looking really happy out there. Big smiles from her as she turns to look at this boulder. Great to see her looking content, calm and collected on those mats on such a big stage. Yeah, her um, experience now in these kind of competitions, she's really feeling at home, I think. Um, really impressive to see her taking her time, just like really figuring things out in real time, it's impressive. Oh, Yannick, absolutely Yannick floating. slow there. I think he needs to go a little faster um, in order to get all of the pieces of this movement connected, but he did look super strong, you have yeah. to admit. Same with Lucy, absolutely crushing this one today. Yeah, definitely looking really strong here, Lucy. No mistakes so far, just cool, calm, collected. Just, just got to give it a bit of oomph here on this final move. Come on, Lucy. Nicely done, and the match. Job to Gooden. And Yannick, oh, just missing the foot again. But great work from Lucy. Uh, always good to finish your competition on the top, right? Yeah, and definitely. A and, you know, seeing a big smile from her, which is great there. She looked really well connected on this climb, and a little tiny bit of a kind of muster at the start as it looked like a sequence might not work but then just really found her stride in the in the later moves so all eyes on Yannick as he prepares for his final boulder still got time for a good few goes but he was looking very very good on this last attempt so let's see how we go there it is, oh, there it is. nice stuck the foot just to break the uh, momentum and now can he hold it together for the finish there is some extreme German cheering going on for Yannick Floe yeah. as he nears this last move, hits the pocket with one, oh. and can he make the match? Yes, he can. Awesome. That's your fifth champion, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I don't think uh, don't think he can be beaten, but um, let's see what the supercomputer says. I think he just won his first quiff. Percy said it. Yeah. I said Percy said it first. I actually said it first, <laughs> but I got him. <laughs> but yeah, Yannick Floe is your quiff champion and Amazing. subject to appeal. Great effort from him. Three tops. Three flashes, I think, right? No, he didn't flash um, all of them. He definitely had a couple of goes on that jump just there. In the corner, yeah. No, no, just right now. Ah. 
It's been a long day, It's John. been a long day, you know? And they all merge into one, you know? The attempts <laughs> Good can't, job we're both can't keep track of them all shorter. <laughs> we're a team, we're a team. <laughs> <laughs> Supercomputer that is my brain struggling. Yeah, anyway. this sort of move isn't Yannick's kind of favourite, um, but he's really good at them when he gets into his groove. Here we go. Alex winding it up. Ooh, taking the ride on the one hand. And Molly pulling on as well for her final boulder of the Quiff Finals. Yeah, come on Molly. Yeah, again going with the palm just to transition through. Really smart. Yeah, I wonder if she maybe read that with Faye climbing it in a very similar style to what Faye did. Holly is one of their teammates as well, so I imagine she'll have read that with them too. Molly looking really cruisy right now. Yeah, really impressive. Uh, Molly and her element through the steep. Ooh, Alex oh. getting very close to hitting that foot, but just missing it a little low with the foot. Again, if he can move a bit faster, that would be good for him. Well Molly, done, Molly. Short work. This last boulder proving to be quite simple for the female athletes, so I'd be surprised if we see a slip from uh, Jenya or Holly, but it can happen. Yeah, Molly looking absolutely devastated, even though she topped another climb. Um, and I think she's just frustrated from the start of the round, I think, where the slab just got away from her. She knows that was a, an opportunity. Yeah, the slab and also kind of a few attempts on other boulders, but meanwhile Alex is on your oh. screen and taking a whip off that. It's almost held the ride, but he's not getting his right foot to make a connection with that black hole. When he hits the black hole with his foot, what that does is allow him to push into the purple, so it creates yep. opposition and stopping the momentum that yep. is forced, as you have to do to jump into that purple hole to get enough movement. You, towards it. Once you hit that foot, yeah, break the momentum and you can readjust in real, like, at the same time to get that purple hold a little bit better he as well. He stopped trying with the foot just now. He didn't even attempt to get it up. And I think that that won't work for him. Maybe his yeah. skin's not feeling great. He didn't seem to have much purchase. I think he really needs to focus on getting his right foot up to the black hold. So really commit into that one, two, three, four. There it is. Just like that. Thanks, yeah. Alex. Great. And then the pockets. He's a man who is strong on pockets. Come on, Alex. Oh. Commentator's curse. He looked a bit rushed there. Yeah, he just seemed um, to want to get it over with. Yeah, too casual. Yeah, he knows what to do now, though, so pretty sure he'll have time. He knows what 20. to do, but it almost looked like he accidentally fell into the right <laughs> position. Um, an experienced athlete, so I'm sure he can replicate. But Yeah, yeah. here was a replay now. Just missing it, basically. Uh, and then out. Great shot on the slow mo, though. Oh, his face. <laughs> Good face. So, just all eyes on Alex now. Clock ticking down, and a move that's so complex, it's hard to replicate. Can he do it when it counts? Yeah, Molly Thompson Smith came out and crushed her boulder, so all eyes on Alex. As he oh, executes wow, that perfectly. Was impressive. To be able to do that again was yeah. so soon and after taking many attempts to learn it, but it matters now. No. He's losing the right hand. Will we see him have another go? There's 40 seconds on the clock. I think clock. he might give it another go for Frustration sure. Frustration from Alex there. So. Seems like his right hand is slipping, so he reaches up to this hold here on the right hand. And it seems like as he hits that top hold, his yeah. right hand slips and doesn't allow him to get enough purchase with yeah. the left hand. The leg swing from the left. Just almost dry firing out of the right. Yeah, Alex could be out of time now. Knowing Alex's skin, I don't expect it's a dry fire. It's true. <laughs> He's yeah. got terrible, yeah. terrible fingertip skin, that guy. <laughs> yeah. Walks there we away go. without the top. That's going to be so frustrating for, for Alex, yeah. <laughs> Not happy with that. So we are getting right towards the end of this competition. Um, Thank you, Sano. Holly Tootil, our next athletes coming out onto their final boulder. We've seen uh, this women's climb been topped quite a few times now, so I'd be surprised, as we said, if we don't see Holly doing this. And uh, Daiki, he's pretty good at the old jumping, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. I'm excited to see both these athletes on their final climbs. So Daiki straight in, giving it the old tap. One, two. Ooh. Just one two. Right. Dog for needs to move a little bit further back yeah. there. He's Almost in the caught him. Zone. Holly taking her time getting he stuck in. He needs to stay composed on this 
We know such can happen, but we also yeah. know that this is a very toppable boulder. Wow. Holly struggling to get in the right position there, but making it work. Needs to not falter as she moves through these next moves. We yeah. haven't seen many falls on this climb from this point upwards. Yeah. Oh, but oh. slips can happen, and there they did, and I think she may have just yeah. potentially thrown away the... the well, we said it earlier, the didn't we? The win, but it was looking like it could have ended up being a tie, and that is an unfortunate slip from yeah. Very unexpected. We know she can keep it together when it counts, but she couldn't just then. Yeah, uh, it's always hard when you're under that kind of pressure where you feel like you've got to flash to keep pace. Uh, also, but worth mentioning that Daiki is, uh, he almost held the swing as well without doing the foot. Daiki which is looks absolutely battered. <laughs> yeah. He looks Welcome so to Quiff. <laughs> tired. I mean, I think this format, Quiff, is unique in the sense it is a 30 yeah. boulder qualification round. Um, and every single one of those counts of points. They've done a semi-finals round and they have done a very, sure. both these athletes have done a very physical um, finals as well. Yeah. This is the last one, so they can give it their absolute all. But Daiki looking like, like he's not got much left. I think in the also, tank. Uh, obviously, being one of our international athletes, no idea exactly where he's going. In. Well, did he come in from Japan direct? I mean, maybe that's taken a bit of toll as well. Uh, or was he in Europe? But um, here goes Holly, lining up the last attempt, the last hold on her attempt. Here we go. And for the match, good work, Holly. She'll be gutted with that slip, but. What an incredible performance though, still four tops. Yeah, really good climbing from her. Great to see her really showcasing what she's capable of. So again, uh, just like the last rotation, all eyes on our male competitor Daiki here. Oh, oh. that was close. Yeah. He's in right now. now you see Holly on the screen, but Daiki, he just almost stuck the jump. It was incredibly close. He got yeah. the one, two, three, four movements. He just slightly missed the foothold. If he can hit that, I think he can stick it. It was For really sure. close. He's learned something on every single attempt. And you, you know what you can tell when someone's unlocked? Yeah. The boulder by how they react on the map. He hit the deck, he jumped back up, grabbed the brush, brushed it immediately. And he's asking the crowd for some support. He wants this. Yeah, he knows. He wants to finish this round on a this round on a high. Here we go. Ali Ali. Oh no. Still got time, minute left. I think he'll give it another one for sure. Someone needs to get that guy a red boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's had a really good round. Be good to finish it. Oh, Come on, Nike, keep going. You just can trying do to it. reel it in. He is absolutely on his knees, literally and figuratively. <laughs> yeah. He really is. <laughs> the clock is ticking. He's choking up. He's going to give it one last yeah. effort. What he knows legend. it's possible. It's such a hard place to be. Come on, my dude. Oh, no. He's just going round and round on this jump move. When will it stop, my dude? Yes, come on! A huge power screen! Huge roar! <laughs> gamba, gamba! No! Oh! <laughs> oh. He's going, He's going again. again! One more effort! Uh, come on, Daiki! <laughs> <laughs> this is everything. Listen. Giving it everything. Oh! Oh! That could have been it on the buzzer. Amazing work from him. <laughs> That's how you put on a show. I was gonna, you took the words out of my mouth. That was a performance, wasn't it? And just like that, we are on yeah. the last athletes Here we of go. this competition. Jenya can take the win. Yeah. Max, fortunately, can't, but he is looking to secure that podium spot. It is almost over. Yeah, incredible work by these guys. Um, fortunately, Max, as Shauna said earlier, did was the only person to top. Uh, the second bowl of the handstand cartwheel, but Max it and Jenny was out, out of time. This moment, they are just staring at that clock you saw right there. Sorry to interrupt, I just love that moment. There's so much focus on the clock because they can't turn around and look at the boulder until yeah. that clock starts ticking. And I love that moment, seeing what's going on in the athlete's eyes because you can see so much. Both Jenny looking calm, collected, composed and fierce and Max looking like he was ready for a good time. Yeah, Max always. There it is. Gaving it everything. That was impressive. It was. Can he stick this final? Come on, Max. Big flick. One hand. Oosh. Can we see the second? Incredible. Absolutely incredible from Max. He's going to be 
super frustrated about that second climb, but he is. Here goes Jenya. What a great performance from him on that final border. Jenya, she's setting up. Can she stick this last hold? Amazing. Time. That's it for the win. The quick Head champ. Back happy, she's your quick champion. Amazing. And what composure to maintain all of that yeah. ability whilst that pressure was sat on her shoulders. You wouldn't know it. She climbed so smooth. Incredible. Super calm and collected. So uh, we're just going to get the old uh, computer getting totting up the scores. So bear with us and we'll be right back with you. Okay, so the scores are coming in for you now. Your champion, Gallic Flo, super impressive. Three tops from him. Uh, out in front by a whole boulder. I mean, had Max done the other climb, maybe he would have been a bit closer, but still had a no, lot of attempts. No, if Max had done the other climb, he would yeah. have had it because it would have come so, to zone. Yeah. So, yeah, a great fight and yeah. impressive effort from all of our podium there. And, you know, Jack McDougall, uh, only 18, I've said it before, but he was third last year, fourth this year, really consistent, looking at the women's. And, yeah, this is, wow, this is you know, amazing. like, a really solid effort from both Jenya and Holly. Interestingly, Jenya, third in 2002, second last year, first this year. That's a good trend. Yeah, that is a really <laughs> good trend and also showing that her training is definitely paying yeah. off. But Holly and Lucy, you know, homegrown talent and really, really at hot at her heels there. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and obviously shout out to Emma, Rachel, Molly, Faye. And Faye, 16 yeah. years old. Incredible. What a performance and what a moment to get to be on that stage fighting and climbing amongst such calibre. Yeah. Really, really cool. And yeah, just what a show it was. Hats um, off to the root setters too. Totally. I was just about to say that. They've got another perfect split. So uh, all the boulders did get done, and albeit the one... Uh, can't wheel boulder was a little bit out of time, but still we're taking it. You know they were all possible. You saw them get done, and uh, fair play to Max Milne for, for sticking with it. Yeah, very much so. It was such a cool moment, and I do love this comp for that. You know, there's some wild moments, and the roots are just allowing the climbers to express their best styles on the mat, and it felt like we saw that tonight. Yeah, absolutely. So um, they're just uh, getting ready on the stage here, setting up all the posters and the podium for presentation. Um, I'm just going to obviously say a huge thank you to you, Shauna, for joining us today. For me, it's awesome having you here. Uh, we used to compete together back in the day, and it was just such a pleasure to see you and, and, and spend some time chatting for prolonged periods of time about climbing. Yeah, thank you for having me, John, and thank you everyone at home for listening. It is such a pleasure to be sat here and to be part of this competition. It is one of the best out there. Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, we're going to say just goodbye from the desk now as they do the uh, presentation. I'm going to try and head down and get um, some interviews with the athletes. Um, fingers crossed they don't all run away from me. But uh, for now, that's it from us. Goodbye. Good night.
De meeting is in de eerste plaats van twee. Aan de eerste kan je aan de eerste. Aan de eerste kan je aan de eerste. So we have the fourth place, Team Edda, who got 721 points. In third place, Precision Climbing Team, who were 844. The runners-up were Team Watt, with 1,101 points. For the winners, the team prize of 1,000 points of the Precision Climbing Team, the number one team, which were Holly Tootill, Jim Pope, Jack McDonald and Max Mel, they got 1,126 points. <laughs> and William Pickles is going to claim a prize for them. No, he's not. <laughs> and, um, are you going to fit on there? You don't all have to get on there if you don't want to. Yeah. There we go. Give it a ladies and gentlemen, Precision Climbing Team number one. Number one. Final results now of the individual competition. The winners, as well as having their name inscribed on the amazing fifth trophy, will also win an absolutely amazing handmade pole for their final wall, which you might get a chance to check out if you're lucky because they're phenomenal. So I'm going to do it in reverse order. Sean McCall's going to present the prizes, so I will do it in reverse order and then we'll get the, uh, the top three up on the podium. So in the women's competition, sixth was Faye McDonald, fifth, Bobby Thompson Smith, fourth, Emma Edwards, in third place, we have Lucy Garland. No, that is right. <laughs> uh, and in second place, we have Holly Tootell. <laughs> and uh, this year's 2024 Quiff champion, we have Yenya Kaspakova. Okay. Oh, you have to all get on the top set, apparently, Graham says. <laughs> oh, God. Careful. Careful now. We don't have an accent. Oh, boys. It would be terrible if the only time you had fallen off was off the podium. Uh, right, now, um, here, on to the men's competition. Oh, so in sixth place, you have Daiki, Daiki Sano in fifth place. Jack McDougall. Fourth place was Amy Dunn. So, third place this year, Alex Magos. Woo! Ooh, that's right. It's a pretty nice hold now, Alex. Bit, bit of a joke, but it's right. In second place, Max Mill. <laughs> uh, this year's 2024 fifth champion, Yannick Floy.
Ladies and gentlemen, that is it for another year. We'll be back next year. Once again, a thank you to everybody who's made this year's quiz possible. The sponsors list is massive. It's on the wall. I'm not saying it all again. It's too tiring. But the big sponsors this year have been Rab, Secure It, Peter Setting, Rock City and Scarpa. So let's give them a massive round of applause. Without them, the quiz wouldn't be possible. Also, the quiz staff, all the volunteers, helpers, the princesses. We'll see you again next year. Okay, so uh, we're here with our male winner, Yannick. Congratulations, uh, fantastic performance. You pretty much dominated that round. Three tops, I mean, incredible climbing. How, how, how do you feel? Thank you very much first. Yeah, I feel super happy. It's like the pre-comp season event, yeah. the quiff. So it's a good indicator to know where we are standing uh, compared to other athletes before the World Cup season. So I'm yeah. happy. Absolutely, and uh, obviously you're you're gearing up, getting ready for Olympic qualification. Um, how, how's your train? Obviously, you're preparing well. You're feeling good shape. I think the shape is good. I just I have some problems with some special kind of boulders every now and then. But this round suited me really well, and now it's just time for training for the Olympic qualifying. Uh, well, congratulations! You put on an amazing show this evening. Uh, you are the 2024 Quiff champion. Congratulations! Thank you very much. So we're here with our women's winner, Jenya. Congratulations. Third, second, first. This is some good progression. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Yeah, I was going for it all the three past years. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. And I understand you've been doing a bunch of training overseas and you're getting ready for the Olympic qualification. This is a good start, huh? How, how are you feeling? I am feeling very inspired and motivated and just so happy that I get to continue my path representing my country and fighting hard. Of course, you, you fought so hard, although it didn't really look like fighting if I'm honest. I mean, those four tops came pretty easy. Uh, you, you must be feeling good going into the season, right? Oh, definitely feeling really good. But uh, behind every flash, there is a lot of hard work. So if it looks easy, that doesn't mean it actually is easy. A hundred percent. It's like a swan. Well, listen, you are the 2024 Quiff champion. Sounds pretty good. Um, thank you so much for joining us and uh, congratulations again. Thank you so much.
Cool. Well, that's it from us here at the uh, Climbing Works International Festival here in Sheffield for 2024. Uh, we've had some amazing performances and thank you all for watching. Join us next year. Dust John out. <laughs>